Marikina Polytechnic College is mandated by Republic Act 9249 to serve as a center for development on shoe and leather craft industry and shall provide technological, professional, and occupational training on the utilization and development of appropriate technologies on community-based enterprises. Through to its mandate, the college established the Shoe and Leather Craft Development Center, or the SLDC, and this year started offering the program BS Entrepreneurship with specialized track in shoe and leather goods marketing. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is the most beautiful day in the universe as Miss Mexico was crowned as the 69th Miss Universe. Today is also a beautiful day for the Philippine higher education because today is the kickoff of the week-long celebration of the 27th Chad founding anniversary. Tomorrow, we will be part of history as a nation celebrates the very first National Higher Education Day. Welcome to our webinar entitled Shoe Industry Maintaining Positivity and Possibility During the Pandemic. Marikina Polytechnic College claims victory as we are being led by the shining beacon of hope in these uncertain times. Dear participants, let us listen to the message of the officer in charge of CHED Office of the Executive Director 4, Director 3 of CHED International Affairs Staff, and our OIC President, Attorney Lily Freda M. Milia. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Attorney Lily. Hello, Attorney Lily. Uh, while waiting for our OIC president, may I request the technic technical group to play our video, Ma'am Lani. Ma'am Elena, our teaser video.
again, we're going to have a week-long celebration of the 27 Ched uh, founding anniversary and our first National Higher Education uh, Day celebration tomorrow. So we're going to have our webinar today. Uh, first is our webinar on shoe industry. Afterwards, 2 o'clock, we're going to have our webinar for our graduating students, the pre-employment webinar. On uh, Wednesday, we're going to have the webinar on productive uh, lockdown through Project Gulayan. And uh, of course, uh, we're going to have the symbolical vaccination, uh, 11 o'clock uh, at the Marikina Sports Center. Then on Thursday, we're going to have the community-based uh, uh, extension uh, programs uh, at the mor in the morning and in the afternoon, we're going to have our uh, webinar on action, action research writing. On Friday, we're going to have our health, uh, health and well-being webinar uh, that will be sponsored by the GAD. Okay. So, Ma'am Lani, uh, Ma'am Wilma, I think we can uh, play the uh, Quentum MIST video while waiting. Go ahead, sir. Marikina Polytechnic College. Isa sa kilalang state college sa National Capital Region na matatagpuan sa lansod ng Marikina. Sa kasalukuyan ay mayroong higit sa limang libong mag-aaralang naka-enroll sa nasabing kolehiyo. Ang dami, di ba? Sa darating na ikalabing walo ng Hulyo, taong kasalukuyan ay pagdiriwang na nito ang ikapitumput apat na taon ng pagkakatatag ng nasabing paaralan. At hanggang sa kasalukuyan ay patuloy pa rin itong nagpapanday ng talino at nagbibigay pa rin ng pag-asa sa libo-libong mag-aaral na makamit ang inaasam na pangarap. Ayon nga sa isang linya mula sa himno ng MPC, talino ko'y pinapanday, turo mo'y pag-asa. Malaki naman talaga ang ginampanan ng MPC upang pandayin ang talino ng mga mag-aaral. At magsisilbing gabay ang itinurong pag-asa nito tungo sa magandang kinabukasan. Kailan nga ba nagsimulang magpanday ng talino at magbigay ng pag-asa ang ating sintang paaralan? Ikalabing walo ng Hulyo, taong 1947, ay itinatag ang Marikina Junior High School sa panahon kung kailan bumabangon pa ang ating bansa mula sa epekto ng digmaan. Itinatag ang nasabing paaralan mula sa kabutihan at pagsisikap ng sangguniang bayan ng Marikina sa pisa ng Resolution No. 59, Series of 1947. Napalitan ang pangalan ng paaralan sa pagsapit nito sa ikalawang taon ng pagkakatatag na pinangalan ng Marikina High School. Muling napalitan ang pangalan nito noong ikalabing walo ng Hulyo, taong 1952. Sa pangalan na Leo de Gario Victorino Memorial High School bilang parangal kay Leo de Gario Victorino na kauna-unahang Pilipinong District Superintendent ng Rizal. Na sa panahong iyon ay bahagi ng Rizal ang Marikina. Taong 1957, mula sa Bisa ng Republic Act No. 1586 na inakda ni Representative Serafin Salvador ng ikalawang distrito ng Rizal ay muling napalitan ng pangalan nito sa Marikina School of Arts and Trades or MSAT. Sa kasalukuyan, kahit ang ilang taon na ang nakalipas, ay kilala pa rin ang ating sintang paaralan sa pangalan nitong MSAT or kapag binigkas ito ng shortcut ay masat. Kahit nga nung ikawalo pa ng Mayo taong 1978, napalitan ang MASAT bilang MIST or Marikina Institute of Science and Technology. Ay nakasanayan ng tawagin pa rin itong MASAT kapag may nagtatanong nga eh kung saan ka nagtatrabaho, nag-aaral, saan banda pupunta sa Marikina, mas kilala pa rin ang MASAT na pangalan. Mula sa MIST, 
ay muli itong napalitan ng pangalan patungo sa Marikina Polytechnic College sa visa ng Republic Act Number no. 9289 noong ikalabing apat ng Abril 2004. Naitatagan sintang paarlan sa panahon na bumabangon pa ang karamihan sa digmaan. Ito ay patunay lamang na walang anumang krisis, dilubyo, at anumang digmaan na makakapigil sa pagpapanday ng talino at pagtuturong matupad ang minipintihing pangarap ng libo-libong mag-aaral. At pinatutunayan ito sa kasalukuyang kalagayan ng ating bansa na laban din ng buong mundo, ang pandemya. Muli ay naharap sa digmaan ng sintang paaralan. Subalit heto ang Marikina Polytechnic College, nakatindig at kasalukuyang ginagampanan ng tungkulin para sa bayan. Matagal nang naglilingkod ang Marikina Polytechnic College sa Sambayanan. Kaya magbago man ang panahon, pangalan at taon ay mananatili itong nakatindig bilang panandang bato na mayroong paaralang bumago sa buhay ng maraming mag-aaral. Marikina Polytechnic College, mabuhay ka! Again, to give her opening remarks, let us welcome our OAC President, Attorney Lili Freda M. Milia. Good afternoon, Ma'am Lili. Hello, good afternoon. Para katatapos lang natin, Jomela. Kaya nga po, Ma'am, tuloy-tuloy po tayo. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, um, everyone. Um, to the Marikina Polytechnic College officials, Dr. Um, Luella Rufa and uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs and uh, Pag-asa, our hope, uh, Miranda, Vice President for Admin and Finance. And of course, our guest speaker for today, very important, the co-founder of Sapateria, Ms. Unix Santa Ana. Um, and another award-winning artist for shoemaking, Mr. Mako Custodio. Thank you. Thank you so much for gracing this, um, this occasion. And this means uh, so much uh, to us in MPC as we search leadership in the shoe design and making um, industry and how we can support the industry. And for Chen because of the continuing support of the Marikina Polytechnic College, especially during the, our celebration of, uh, of Chad's 27th founding anniversary and the, uh, and the celebration tomorrow, May 18, of the first National Higher Education Day. So lahat ng mga faculty, students, participants from the industry, Salamat, maraming salamat for tuning in. Um, Napaka-importante po nitong event na to dahil sinisimulan natin at paiigtingin pa ang ating koneksyon sa industriya po sa pag, uh, 
pagpagaw, uh, paggawa ng sapatos. Ano ba sa Tagalog ang design? Pagdesenyo rin ng sapatos. And I've always believed that the Filipinos, I mean tayo, lahat tayo naniniwala, yung, yung creativity, natin, creativity natin, number one yan sa region na to, sa ASEAN. And this is uh, the opportunity for our students and the faculty, for the staff of NPC to lead the way. Um, I, I see our beautiful director, Director Barbarais of uh, our uh, shoe um, and leather Tamaba design um, department. Yes. So everybody is inspired. I am inspired. Sino ba naman hindi mahilig sa sapatos? Di ba? And we want to design the shoe. Dapat magpa-contest tayo, Director Balbaray. Sapatos sa panahon ng pandemya. Ano gusto ko makita? Kung reach mo na dapat ng sapatos natin sa panahon ng pandemya. So, um... Thank you. And so thank you really for, for uh, taking time to join us in this uh, important um, event. This activity will provide a venue for the MPC students and those uh, to, to learn more about the footwear um, industry and the design and recognize the importance of raising awareness and support for the local shoe industry. Para sa mga industriya ito rin po para mag-usap tayo. Simulan natin ang pag-uusap. Let us continue the conversation because MPC is here, is here for you and with you. At yan po ay talagang nakatatak na rin sa atin because we created also a special department uh, for this. It is our way to discover also and nurture the creativity in every one of us, the creativity in our students, the creativity in the faculty. And therefore, we can contribute to the footwear design and craftsmanship in terms of a greater research, planning, and, um, and um, partnership with the industry. Um, I look forward to this session. I'll be here and listening. Maraming salamat po sa inyo Oh, thank you so much, uh, Attorney Lily. Kayo po ay inspiration sa amin. Isipin niyo si Ma'am Lily po, isa sa mga punong abala sa national celebration ng Shed Founding Anniversary at yung first national higher education. Pero meron pa rin po siyang oras to join our local celebration. Maraming maraming salamat po, Attorney Lily, sa inyo pong pag-support po sa amin. Uh, moving on, let's uh, proceed with our uh, seminar proper. Okay, let me introduce our first speaker. Graduating with honors with a degree in computer science at the La Salle University, Manila, our first speaker has over a decade of experience in leading technology-based enterprises. She has built successful startups and le led executive roles in the digital transformation and product management for the Philippines. Uh, for the Philippines, largest enterprises in e-government, e-commerce, uh, fintech, ad tech, and big data. The first startup, uh, her first startup, a multi-awarded automated platform for advertising compliance and media analytics was acquired in 2017. From being a technopreneur to getting into a craft, she uh, on its fifth generation carrying on the shoemaking heritage of the family, co-founded Sapateria, the Philippine, uh, Philippines' first creative hub for footwear design and development with a mission to foster a new generation of creative makers. She is awarded, oh, she is an awardee of Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Young Women Innovators and one of the British Council Creative Innovators Program Fellows. She is currently taking up her Master's of Science in Innovation and Business at the Asian Institute of Management. To talk about the shoe industry landscape, let us welcome the co-founder of Sapateria, Miss Unix Santa Ana. Good afternoon, Miss Unix. Good afternoon, Mr. Bautista, and thank you to Attorney Lily for welcoming us here. We are very excited to be here and we hope we can share our deck so we can get rolling. This is just a start, Miss Unix, and we really look forward to working with you. I would not miss a chance to work with someone named Uniquely Unix. Yes, definitely. And we are very thankful that we are here because we share the same passion when it comes to shoes. And syempre, saan pa ba dapat magsimula kung di dito sa Marikina? Uh, we have a forward-looking 
view of the future of footwear here in a country. And definitely, it's important that we have a program like BS Entrepreneurship, major in leather goods and footwear because ang magpapatuloy ng ating heritage dito sa ating minamahal na Marikina City ay syempre kayo na, ang mga kabataan. And of course, syempre nanggaling tayo kanina lang sa Miss Universe, one of the proudest moments bukod sa magandang performance ni Rabia ay ang mga sapatos na gawang Pilipinas. So, there were about 300 pairs sent to US for the Miss Universe candidates to wear shoes made in the Philippines, made by the finest, finest Filipino craftsmen. It's something that we should be proud of, that nakakarating sa iba't ibang bansa ang mga sapatos natin. Before we get started, I want to get the audience engaged. Uh, maybe you can go and type in Slido, S-L-I dot D-O, and input the code. I want to get an idea lang of what comes to your mind when you hear of Marikina shoemakers, shoemaking, shoe industry, any words that you hear around shoemaking or when you hear about shoes made in Marikina or in the Philippines. I want to get like an idea so we can see a word cloud. I hope everybody is getting in the word cloud. Please type in sli.do in your browser. Let me know if you guys can access it. So I can see some of you are inputting matibay na sapatos. Marami. Um, Nagsasabi, matibay. Keep on going. I can see it. World class, authentic, beautiful. Craftsmanship, quality shoes, durable one of a kind, globally competitive. I'm very happy to see all of these words. And this goes to show how we should all be optimistic about our industry despite of our challenges today. And I'll tell you more about why we should be positive and really explore the possibilities of how we can grow the local shoe industry together. Matibay at garantisado. Thank you everyone who participated in Slido. Later on, we'll have a few more. So with that in mind, that we know how important the next generation of the creative innovators in footwear industry would be in shaping the future landscape of this sector. In 2017, we founded Zapateria. It serves as a creative playground for footwear design and development with the belief that our country could be a world-class destination for a globally competitive design craftsmanship. So tama sa mga naririnig natin kanina, craftsmanship at matibay maganda fashion. We want the Philippines to be known as a destination and that includes also, syempre, ang paggagawa natin ng magagandang sapatos dito sa Marikina at sa iba pang lugar sa Pilipinas. Importante dito is how we can foster collaborative creativity and innovation from one generation to the other. We want to make sure that we can keep the shoemaking heritage 
and marrying it with how we can make it relevant today so we can make sure it continues to thrive even in the future. Let's just look at how big the opportunity is. Marikina shoe industry alone, according to the reports published last year, is valued at 1 billion pesos alone. And with the big population of the Philippines, around 108 million, of course, we can make more shoes and we can sell a lot more here domestically and abroad. We know of big brands such as Otto, Gibson, Word Balance, CLN, Islander, GB. They contribute billions of pesos in revenues becoming the leading footwear brands in the country. These top brands goes to show how lucrative the business of footwear is. And you can be part of them or why not start and put up your own? Let me share you a story of Mr. Manuel Samson. He is the founder and president of Otto. He started the humble beginnings, just like any kind of businesses. And that will give you an idea of everybody could start small and can go big. Auto Shoes was born out of a young man's passion for shoemaking. Manuel P. Sampson is from a family of shoemakers who learned the value of hard work early in life. He used to make 100 pairs of shoes a week in the backyard of their ancestral home in Marikina. With the help of his parents and his wife, he was able to build Auto Shoes as a retail arm of SOG Manufacturing Corporation. Today, Auto Shoes is known for its stylish and high quality leather footwear and products that cater to all ages. Whether it's school shoes, a pair for work, or leisure, Filipinos know it's a durable brand they can rely on in any season. No wonder it is a household name for Filipino made leather shoes. As of 2019, Auto Shoes has grown and developed from its parent company, MPS Group of Companies. Currently, it has established 72 stores across the Philippines, and it produces 4,000 pairs of shoes every single day. Apart from producing shoes, the MPS Group of Companies also manufactures rubber sheets and injection moldings of ready-made shoes and slippers. It also supplies shoe components, such as leather accessories and buckles, man-made upper materials, and shoemaking tools. While already utilizing its online store, Auto Shoes has joined the biggest online sellers in the country, such as Shopee, Lazada, and Zalora, to keep up with the changing times and to reach a bigger market. The company invests in modern equipment as well to make the traditional production efficient and the designs cutting edge without losing the shoemaker's touch in every pair. As for the company's environmental efforts, Auto Shoes is intentional to reduce its carbon footprint and to instill an eco-conscious mindset to its employees. 
Its environmental efforts are evident in its 50,300 square meter workshop located in Antipolo Rizal, which has solar panels installed. Activated carbon filters are also being used in the workshop to help clean the air. While Auto Shoes recycled packagings are biodegradable and eco-friendly to reduce wastage. Besides improving its environmental efforts, Auto Shoes commits in ethical business practices to improve the lives of its 576 loyal employees in every possible way, be it emotional, physical, or financial well-being. The company provides a positive work culture and treats each employee equally. Being in the shoe business for almost 50 years, SOG Manufacturing Corporation has no plans on stopping and will continue to supply to various local department stores nationwide while carrying the brand Auto. The MPS group of companies will upgrade its facilities to maintain the high standard of workmanship it is known for and increase the revenue in the years to come. On its 40th year, Manuel P. Sampson envisions that auto shoes will continuously adapt to the aesthetics of the modern Filipino, redesigning its invaluable brand, improving every customer experience, and embracing a business-to-human approach. More than the goals it has achieved through the years, Auto Shoes will not be a trusted brand today if not for the dedication and hard work of its employees. The company is very grateful for the new generation of shoemakers ready and committed to carry on the legacy of Auto. Because more than anything else, Auto Shoes is made for every Filipino in every walk of life. So, Mr. Manuel Samson is only a few, is one of those who have made it really big from a humble beginnings, and I really look up to him on how he was able to grow up or grew his business and now his children continues on operating and growing the business and not only in footwear but he also produces raw materials that the industry awesome. needs. Another <laughs> story would be Mr. Antonio Andres. He is the current president of the Philippine Federation Inc. and the President of Gibson. If you have been part of ROTC, you will be familiar with his brand Gibson. Ito ay isang matiba na military shoes. They all manufacture safety shoes and even uh, casual and dress shoes under a different brand. Isa sila sa pinakamalaking supplier natin ng military shoes sa ating armed forces of the Philippines. Auto or Gibson are only two companies that have shown how lucrative footwear business is. The Philippines, if you have to look at it, is backed mostly with MSMEs. So the micro small players bring more revenue and employ more people together. You can be your own boss or be part of the many startups and upstarts out there which have been growing steadily and operating sustainably. So you might have been seeing brands such as Annie and Lori, Forward, Olivia in your Facebook or Instagram. So those are upstart brands that are really making it and you can have yours too or be part of them. Now, how can we differentiate ourselves as Philippine made? footwear or as Filipino brand because like when you look at the footwear industry it could get really competitive when we look at the other comparable brands abroad we have heard of Havaianas and that was founded in Brazil it's simple but have been 
very durable and known to be colorful and fashionable a slipper. Another brand that we know of would be Allbirds. So this is based in US, but like their beginning started in New Zealand. A lot of what they use as material are sustainable materials are which are very good with the environment because we have to take care of our planet. And another one, I know you can be familiar with it, would be Sano. What is interesting with this brand is it started, the, the founder is actually a surfer and he has that lifestyle of making sure the footwear could be worn in casual location or going on a beach very comfortably. We also have our neighboring country, such as Malaysia. So she, Nadisa Hillman, which also a brand, uh, her designs are classic, but put in that youthful vibe and also traces back to celebrating the heritage of uh, shoemaking in Malaysia. And another fun fact, actually, Malaysian scene, uh, Jimmy Shoe, one of the famous uh, shoe designs in the world. In United Kingdom, naman, there, there is a brand called Grandson. Here, they have been operating for about 150 years and they stick with their heritage of craft but made it more rugged, modern, and has become a global favorite. In Utopia, which this is interesting. So the food where they make they make is actually handmade, but they have grown the brand to become a, a big one and valued at a billion. So what they did is they used the tire of, of the they used the sole, the tire as a sole, and they make the shoes by hand. Going back here, where we are at home, of course, we have Zapatero, Manila. So they have raised the standard of uh, craftsmanship when it comes to formal wear, dress shoes. And if you just take a look at what they have, they have been featured internationally. Too. So this are the kind of brands that we're looking for uh, that might really become big and will set us apart uh, in, around the world. When you look at uh, the business of footwear, of course, we won't just talk about designing and making shoes because creative innovation can mean applications for materials or business model such as if you've heard of Pinatex. This material is made out of pineapple fibers. While it is made in the Philippines, it is owned by a Spanish company. It is up to our challenge how we can make another material that would help the local industry in terms of making it more sustainable or eco-friendly. Could be a thesis that you can pursue under the BS entrepreneurship in shoes and leather goods. Another example could be Mohawk. So Mohawk con uh, combines this digital artisan in their footwear making. They use laser cutting and 3D printer elements in making made to order shoes. So the technology such as laser cutting and 3D printing are available here. And in fact, we have a shared service facility where you can make use of if you need such equipment. And I'll tell you more about that. We can also take a look at how we can improve the processes or better the customer experience when it comes to the food or business or industry. So there is this brand or company called Andanti. When you visit their site, you can customize and have a virtual look of how the customization will work. Another one, in terms of improving product development, there's a software you can use so 
it's easy to kind of visualize the prototype uh, before you actually make them, saving you a lot of money. And Volumental, it's something a favorite of mine because what they did, uh, they have saved a lot of foot measurement to kind of analyze uh, the customer's data points when it comes to sizing. So again, when it comes to footwear, there are different paths that you can take. So whether you can, you want to design, you want to make, you want to uh, work with a brand or start your own or innovate the process. There are endless possibilities. And especially when we're looking at the Filipino uh, talents, we are known to be creative and discussion. We can definitely start here in the Philippines. Why? Uh, because we are blessed to still have skilled talents that can imagine and make all kinds of footwear from avant-garde to artisan designer to fast fashion to safety shoes. We still have the infrastructure and support system. Adding up to the support system is definitely the academe. Uh, that's why we'd like to thank again MPC for having us here. When we look at the footwear industry, there are different types of manufacturers. Uh, they can be industrialized uh, or purely handmade. They can take in volume to small orders to meet the order to bespoke. Some would do more private labeling or reselling. Some would make sure that they want their shoes manufactured rather than just labeling uh, as a design of the manufacturer. And we have complementary services, such as some people do cleaning and repair services and training. We also have all the materials available here. Even our leathers can be locally sourced. The Philippine Footwear Federation Inc. It's the trade association to represent the Philippine manufacturers for footwear, and now also growing the other allied members. So this is headed by Gibson President Founder, Mr. Tony Andres. It's based here in Marikina. What they do here is that they have equipment and machines that you can use of so you can be more efficient with your uh, production, or you can also design via the software that they have. You can do testing uh, to make sure the quality of your footwear and they also put up a Philippine Footwear Academy. The industry is growing stronger. The, the, our Marikina City Government, Department of Trade of Industries, and TESDA had been committing support to infuse a lot of investment in making sure the industry would grow. In fact, TESDA has started to roll out their uh, certification. So this could enhance um, more of the technical skills in case you want to go that route. And one of the uh, pioneering assessors or the first assessor ever in the country is someone from the from Marikina and is a female entrepreneur. So let's hear from Miss Cindy now. Hello, everyone. Good morning, and salamat po sa pag-invite sa akin ni Ms. Grice and Ms. Phoenix sa Sabateria para po sa inyong uh, event ngayon. Ako po pala si Morena Cindy, first TESDA footwear assessor in the Philippines. Bakit po ba ako naging first TESDA footwear assessor? 2018, nagkaroon po ng regional lead trainers assessor na ginawa sa Davao City or Atenea de Davao City and isa po ako sa participants na nakatapos ng assessment. And 2019, nag-aaral ako sa National Trainers Academy, which is NTPA. Kumuha ako ng Trainers Methodology at nakapasap po ako and nakakuha ko ng National. As an expert, isa po ako sa gumawa ng Training Regulation NC1 Basic and Training Regulation NC2 Advanced for Shoemaking. 
and ako din po ang nagtayo ng Patronista or Pattern Makers Association of the Philippines, which is mga namamadron, hindi lang sapatos, kasama ng bags at iba pa. Nagawa ko din po ngayon ang training regulation ng bags and accessories, NC1, basic, NC2, advanced, and NC3 is design. Kasama din po ako sa DTI BPS or Department of Trade and Industry Standardization para po sa footwear and leather goods. After years of training abroad, aral, seminars, itinayo ko yung company ko, which is Roberta Enterprise. So bakit po Roberta Enterprise? Roberta meaning is a love sharing, giving, and humanity. Ako lang po ang nag-umpisa. At ang mga susunod na henerasyon ay magagaling na po sa inyong eskwelahan at sa iba pa mag-aaral ng footwear and leather goods sector. And uh, sana na-inspire po kayo sa akin, Chanel. Okay, so, so Miss Cindy, uh, like she shared, everything so, needs hard work. And salamat, as you can see now, when you look at the industry, the stakeholder, all the members are very active because they want to make sure that it thrives and it's not only the manufacturers, the government are here, the academy, the suppliers, the designers, the makers, customers, employees, and everyone that contribute to making sure it progresses. So let's kind of go into getting to know more people uh, in the foodware industry. We have Mr. Roger P who is also from the Philippine Footwear Federation, Inc., who has been lobbying a lot of uh, support programs that could help the industry further. We have Mr. Joey Enriquez, president of Charter International, and if you're familiar with the brands like Filia, he is also from Argentina, studied here, and then went abroad to study design and went back here to put up his own and we shared about Zapatero Manila and that one of the owners of which is J.R. Hader. So the industry don't only comprise of men. We have a lot of women too. One of the friends that we have is Bettina Young. He is, she is a shoemaker based in Italy. She grew up here, studied here, and then eventually like decided, you know what, I want to make shoes, I want to make shoes, I want to learn. Uh, and he studied abroad, and now he, she is a shoemaker in one of the Italian brands. Some other shoemakers or designers uh, would be Paolo Lazzatin. She's based in uh, New York. Uh, she also studied here uh, and grew up here. And another one would be Carla Apastol. She is a professional footwear designer and recently has uh, won the first place in the recently concluded Filipino footwear design competition with her masterpiece, Shera. She studied in UP uh, and then worked a bit here but a lot of her professional design experience, experiences are abroad in Italy. Maybe we could kind of um, hear from her and see how she got inspired with her footwear design. Hi everyone, I'm Carla Apostol and I'm a footwear designer. A few months ago, I had the privilege of earning the top place in the most recent Philippine footwear design competition with my entry, Sierra. So where do I start? I've been trained academically as an accessories designer and I've been lucky enough to work at design studios that have rounded out my knowledge and skills that led me to okay. designing her. Hang on, let me I went on the video. Think of both fashion and tip.
Hi everyone, I'm Carla Apostol and I'm a footwear designer. A few months ago, I had the privilege of earning the top place in the most recent Philippine footwear design competition with my entry, Sierra. So where do I start? I've been trained academically as an accessories designer and I've been lucky enough to work at design studios that have rounded out my knowledge and skills that led me to designing her. I've observed though that what comes to mind when you think of a fashion or accessories designer, it means looking and attending fashion shows and exhibits and then drawing all day. While yes, that is a big part of the job description, it also means being able to render your vision both creatively and technically, analyzing your targets, establishing good communication with your team, and tying them all together as a solid product. So for Sierra, I first did my research. I looked at past competition winners, actually all of the finalists that I was able to Google because I wanted to see what the judges would be looking out for. The next thing I did was brainstorm. What story can I tell with my design? And how can I express this in a way that emphasizes my strengths as a designer, but at the same time would be a strong contender in the competition? And after that, I drew for maybe two weeks before I submitted the final design. So it just so happened that I had just been through the wedding of one of my closest friends, which happened in Tagaytay during the Taal eruption back in January last year. Most of us couldn't attend since getting to Tagaytay was so dangerous. So it was like all the months of planning and foolproofing were disrupted by a natural calamity that took only a few hours to happen. And this really impacted me. Um, I told myself that this could be a great story to tell through design. So that's the inspiration, the spectacular nature of the Earth's composition. <laughs> um, the rich minerals created by the movements under the Earth's crust, like precious stones, the colors found in nature, like rich browns and pure tones of white, all of Part, all the parts of this planet that is able to create beauty, but also to destroy. So the next thing I had to think about was how to tie all these visuals together to get in a shoe. So a great tool for designing, I feel like, is thinking of a muse. So I thought of a woman that is close to nature, someone that's maybe nomadic and believe in the healing powers of Mother Earth, someone with a free spirit that appreciates beautifully crafted objects that couldn't be as beautiful if they weren't done by hand. So this is where my other big inspiration marries my story, which is our country's footwear industry, particularly in Marikina. I wanted the design to be able to reflect the abilities of the local artisans, and I was very lucky to have been mentored by Sir Rico Santa Ana and everyone in Zapateria because they were able to bring my intricate design to life. My sketches literally jumped off the paper and into my hands. But it wasn't an easy process, especially as it was GCQ and for the whole competition. And in a typical setting, the designer should be like physically present at production to be able to give proper direction. But like I said, great communication with your team is key. And I'm a firm believer that high-end prep is needed for a high-end result. It's cliche, but there is no short shortcut, shortcut to success. You definitely need diligence and belief in yourself and what you can bring to the table. So I'd like to end all of this by saying, listen to your mentors, listen to your teachers, do your research, sketch a lot, but ultimately enjoy the process. It's really fun. So I'd like to say thank you to Marikina Polytechnic College, Ched, and of course my fairy godparents at Zapateria for pushing me and making Sierra a literal dream come true. So to all of you, best of luck and stay brilliant. Thank you. So that would be Carla Apostol, and I heard that you'll come up with a design competitions. So I hope more of you will be uh, joining. Um, that competition that will be organized by the school. Let me just share back my screen again. 
So who would who have who have thought that this is actually inspired by um the the, the eruption of the uh, volcano? So if you come to think of it, when you design, there could be a lot of inspiration, and Marco Pastorio later will be uh, helping you with that. So these are some of the designs that are won in the recently completed um, uh, competition. Just gonna power it through. And we have more friends in the photo sector. We have Myra, who is an artist, uh, who also took up fine arts and ventured into footwear. And Tian Rodriguez, a fashion designer, a friend of ours, who bagged the silver award in 2019 in the international stage. So this was a proud moment uh, for the Philippines because this is the highest placing one that we ranked and hopefully we'll get the gold one in the next round. We also have our youngest maker, uh, Camila. So she started to learn shoes at age 16, but now she's uh, 20. So we hope uh, more of you young folks will venture into footwear. Internationally, we would have uh, the, sh the shoe custom brands such as JV Customs, uh, which customizes sneakers. So I know a lot that the young folks love sneakers. So this could be a lucrative business too, uh, because a lot of people would want to be able to customize their Nikes and all. Another Filipina uh, based in Spain is uh, the brand Sibelia Smith. So she actually uh, is the one making shoes herself. So what could I say? The future is indeed very, very exciting, uh, but it can only happen. We can only make this happen with you on board. Uh, we hope we can uh, start to, to make, sho make shoes, but first, how do we really start? I think it's important that when you start, you would know who you are and uh, you would also know your why's. So you have a strong identity moving forward and you will be able to navigate your career path or um, in your, your journey as an entrepreneur. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, the founder of Ground Control who we have been working with for Sapatira in terms of marketing to, to share um, how you can start. Guys? Hi there. Hello. Right. Um, I'm just going to share my screen if that's okay. There you go. So, sino gumagamit ng Canva sa inyo? Definition represent, guys. So before we start, um, hi, I'm Glyce. I'm the founder of Ground Control, and I'm also the management associate in Zapateria. And I want to start this part of this talk with a question to the students and also maybe the faculty. Um, what did you guys want to be or what do you guys want to be when you guys graduate college? You guys can chat your answers sa um, Zoom. I'll just check it out. What do you guys want to be? When you graduate. So Cyril wants to be a businesswoman. Sophia wants to be a fashion designer. How about the others? A successful businesswoman, an educator. Good for you, Rosemary. A machine shop owner, a fashion designer, okay. A chief, ng barangay, Patricia, or I'm kidding. <laughs> a teacher, an educator. It's really good. A lot of you guys um, want to uh, go into the academy because that's very important. And kudos to the teachers that you guys have in in Marikina Polytechnic College and, and CHED. Make a business and become a teacher. That's really good. A cake business owner, okay. A flight attendant, a fashion designer. Okay, so a lot of you guys want to 
go into um, you know the creative industries and become you know entrepreneurs yourself may mga gusto rin pumasok ng culinary and the academe and that's really good because you guys you guys are in college and you already know what you guys want to be so i'm just 24 i graduated college two years ago and i took up marketing management in san Beda college and during that time i didn't know what i wanted to be when i was in grade school i wanted to be a politician in high school i wanted to be a radio jock for rx and i wanted to make film i wanted to pursue a communication course but instead i ended up with a business administration program in manila i was not at all ready to take up business i did not aspire to be an entrepreneur or a marketer or any of that sort um all i wanted to do was talk and you know be heard by the time na graduate ako ng college ang gusto ko na maging ay asawa ng milyonaryo so <laughs> until now naman pero uh, i'm on my way there uh, <laughs> So, pretty much this presentation isn't super business per se. Um, it's more of a personal branding, if you want to get like a, a, a business aspect, but mostly it's personality development in a certain way. So what's your unique purpose? Oftentimes, when we do these talks, ang lagi namin sinisimulan, when it comes to the shoe people, is um, why shoes? Like, do you, do you, are you passionate about footwear? Is it something that you really love? And is it something that you really want to pursue? Because you have to have a really, really strong purpose in order for you to make an impact. And I, I want to tell these, you guys, these students, that you are so very blessed to have a program that is very specific, but also very general. Na, my specialty kayo, but you can venture into anything that you want to be. Like honestly, the programs that you guys are taking up, it's so very what general. You can pursue anything at all. Pursue your dreams. You want to be the next Miss Universe, like Rabia. Sadly, should not win, but you can do that. And your background is entrepreneurship and footwear. It makes you incredibly unique. And the, another thing that makes you incredibly unique is your identity and your experiences and the ideas that you have. Oftentimes, when you meet an entrepreneur or a maker, a designer, ang laging usapan dyan is ano yung bago mong creative idea or ano yung nangyari sa'yo last week. And right now, you guys are like Gen Z. I'm a Gen Z or I'm a millennial. And sobrang um, influence tayo ng mental health and we're I'm very very happy that our generation is so very aware about our you know experiences our traumas and I would like to advise you guys to take those experiences good or bad to build your unique identity and your unique purpose so for example me like I said I wanted to pursue communications I was a very creative person and business in a marketing sense is creative but it's also very technical it's all so very research based there's no sense of expression there except for the expression na ibibigay sa yo ng boss mo but from my background of being a creative writer i also became an amazing copywriter from me understanding consumer behavior through marketing i also became a more empathetic um, entrepreneur so take those experiences with you and build around it. Because those are the things that will build you as a professional, you as a person, and your brand or whatever business venture you want to take on. So this is a work cycle of me as um, the management associate of Zapateria, as a shoe marketer. And I'm pretty sure it's a work cycle of mga teachers nyo or kayo as students of my boss, of, of the designers that we work with, is that a big chunk of that work cycle is us having a panic attack because we don't know what we're doing. We start out with, you know, thinking of the idea, the big idea that would set us different, that would change the world, disrupt industries and whatnot. Um, 
And then right after, mayroon tayong idea, nagpapanik na tayo na, wait, paano ko gagawin yun? <laughs> Iyak-iyak ng onte, drama-drama, you know, manggo-ghost ng people, whatever. Kain. And um, the latter part of it is actually doing the job. But in order to do the job, you have to embrace that work cycle that you have that, again, is very unique to you as a person, as a professional. And that's the thing that would set you apart from your competitors, whether as a business, as an employee, or as an entrepreneur. And I want to paint this picture that it's very difficult to be an entrepreneur, to be a businesswoman, to be a creative or any sort, whether you're an employee or a business owner, a founder, um, it's difficult. It's not always 100% happy. Rather, maybe 75% of it is you having a hard time. But at the end of the day, it's also very fulfilling. I founded Ground Control with my time here in Zapateria because almost every day, I encounter people with the brightest and most passionate ideas and halfway through talking about and how, halfway through making their prototypes, makikita mo na yung doubt sa mukha nila na parang, wait, sure ba ako dito? Because this is difficult. But it's also a different experience when you see them launch. When you see their faces, um, when somebody finally purchases their design, when somebody posts their, their shoes online saying that I love this pair of shoes that I bought from Mara Pinon or from Mako Custodio. It's a whole different level of um, fulfillment as a person, as a creative, as an entrepreneur, when you see your ideas come into reality. And that was what Carla was talking about. It came from a, an experience that was maybe a little bit drowning, a little bit negative, but she turned it into something positive. And from that positivity, it also became difficult to execute because of the limitations of the GCQ. And at the end of the day, she, she won the competition. And that's pretty much the story of every entrepreneur that you meet. It's always going to start with a difficult idea, a bright but difficult idea, a struggle that will lead you to something wonderful. And when you lead there to that wonder, you need to have a very strong purpose because that's the thing that's going to power you through. So, again, going back to that concept na, alam nyo na ba ako anong gusto nyo maging? What you guys want to be right now is different from what you are going to be when you graduate school. Again, when I was in college, I, I wanted to marry a millionaire. <laughs> but really, what I wanted to be was, uh, I, I wanted to work in an agency, to be um, a public relations manager for an agency. And I ended up working in a creative hub in Marikina because it was close to home. I had no job opportunities besides this. And madali mo commute, so game na. <laughs> um, I didn't understand anything about footwear. Like every day, uh, I talk to the makers here, I talk to the designers here, and everybody's so passionate. Nakakahawa siya. Now, to this point, I am so fulfilled. And I find my sense of purpose to get up every day and go to work solely because of the passion of everybody else that I became passionate about by making their dreams into a reality. So maybe a lot of you nagtataka, because ako personally, I get bullied that I work in the shoe industry. Lagi yung sinasabihan ng parents ko na parang, ah, so gusto maging sapatero? And I say, yes, I do. I don't find it um, undignifying. I'm very proud if I was to be a sapatero. Kasi ang gagaling ng sapatero. Ibang level ng critical thinking ang meron ang tao nagbo-work in the craft industry. So I want you guys to look in the bigger picture of what you guys are capable of. These are the things that are possible and not just limited to this. You can be a business founder, a creative director, an, independ an independent maker, a singer-songwriter. Kayo bahala. The, 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 you know, the possibilities are endless, really. But in order for you to find that, always go back to that purpose. And this is like, um, this is a framework that the Japanese use to find their ikigai. The ikigai is the reason why you wake up every day. And you guys are in college and these things are subject to change. But I want you guys to give this, you know, a test. 
screen cap, um, take a picture of this diagram right now. And when you have your free time, try to list down um, from these questions. What are you good at? What are the things that you love? What do you think the world needs? And what can you get paid for? And at the end of it, you will find your passion, your mission, your profession, and your vocation. And the common, den the common denominator of those four is the reason why you're here. And at that reason, that why is going to power you through any venture that you wish to pursue. So let's talk business. The value proposition, again, the thing that makes you unique. In business terms, pag brand ka, pag company ka, ito yung difference mo from your competitors. The thing that would make your market choose you over everybody else. Why does Nike users use Nike, not Adidas? So why would employers choose you over the Ateneo graduate, right? So the thing that makes you unique is the convergence of what people want or need and are willing to pay for and who you are, what you best do, and what you love doing. When you put that all together, it makes you different. And from there, once you find yourself, once you find that purpose, what you want to be, and the impact that you want to make, you move from finding yourself to founding a company or founding um, the next big shoe brand or the next big fashion brand. And when you start from there, you start from your story and your vision. So a story... It could be drawn from anything. The inspiration can be drawn from anything, whether it's your perfect personal experience, growing trends, personal values, influences, necessity, opportunity, or maybe just a, a passion project. Um, during the quarantine, you can see that there are a lot of online seller. And during that time, because they were so bored, 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 they it's a funny story to start out of, but it's also an inspirational story once you're a user. Because you would begin to think, now, hey, this is an entrepreneur who started a business during a pandemic. And it doesn't, it, you shouldn't limit it to just that. You can start with something that you personally are you know, motivated by. You like TikTok, then you concentrate. Maybe not just footwear, about craft, about... Filipino identity. And people earn a lot of money from being a content creator. With that story, I would like to share you the story of Buhay. So Alika Key is um, a Filipino shoemaker, born in the Philippines rather, grew up in the United States and United States and is now based in Norway. So Alika is an orphan here in the Philippines. He was adopted when he was 10. And when we were talking about his brand, Buhay, um, he shared that the biggest reason why he wanted to venture into footwear was because when he was young, he didn't have shoes. He was too poor to have a pair of shoes. That's why when he got his education abroad, the first thing that he ventured into was footwear. And being an orphan, being a poor person in the Philippines, very, very marginalized, his life was surrounded by trash. So when he was conceptualizing this design, ang unang pumasok sa isip niya is, gagawa ng sapatos gamit sa ako ng bigas. So gumawa siya ng sapatos gamit sa ako ng bigas. And he was able to develop it from there and moving it towards collaborating with Pinatex, with, with pineapple leather. And now he was able to launch this brand made here in the Philippines, available worldwide. So that's his story. And he was able to innovate based on his creativity and his experience. Malaki yung hugot. And on its own, the design is amazing, but the story inspires, it motivates, it catches the attention of a market. And just seeing this now, knowing the background of Buhay Shoes, I'm sure you guys would want a pair. So aside from your story, you should have a vision. You need to be forward-looking. Good that you're focusing on today. But in order to generate an idea that makes a bigger difference, to be a person that makes a bigger difference, you need to have a forward-looking vision, a dream, an aspiration, rather, that you wish to attain. And oftentimes, a vision is fueled by impact 
benefit and importance. When you have your story and your vision, you can put up your big idea. So your big idea in brand concepts and business concepts is pretty much um, what your venture is, what you wish to pursue, what you wish to build. And making a big idea, you need to think of being a business person, be a marketer rather. You, you guys have a specialized track in marketing and it's really, really good to have a, a background in marketing. Because of all the business tracks, you guys are the most connected to the market. Kaya nga marketing eh. When I was in school, lagi akong tinatanong na, para ah, marketing kaso ikaw yung namimigay ng flyers sa mall. So I ko, well, I'm not going to be ashamed if that's going to be my career. But yung mga flyers na binibigay kong yun, it makes me connect with people. And in order to make that big idea work, you should have your purpose. Again, your story and your vision. You have your people or your market, a good understanding of who they are, where you can find them, and how you can satisfy their wants and needs. Of course, you have to have a product that will represent that purpose and that will fulfill the people and a process that ties everything together to make your product, your idea, accessible to these markets. Again, the big idea in a non-business way is your inspiration, your imagination, and your facts. You should always put in a little bit of research in what you do. Your brand concept, once you put it together with those four Ps, or rather different four Ps from the four of the marketing mix in um, by Philip Kotler, it's pretty much the general def uh, definition that also serves as your basic elevator pitch to describe what your brand is. And I'm not just talking of a brand that is a shoe brand or a fashion brand, like even you as a person, your personal branding is still a big idea. So this is a sample big idea. Corona is an online active footwear brand for those who live an adventurous lifestyle during the new normal. Made with the practicality in mind, Corona features comfortable shoes that you can wash and wear after every adventure. Now see how that statement already mentions all of the factors that contribute to a big idea. It has its purpose, it has its people, it has its process, and it pretty much describes the product. So your concept needs to answer the why, what, who, where, and how of what you're offering. So oftentimes, like I shared earlier, I encounter a lot of entrepreneurs here in Zapateria, and that's pretty much one of the reasons why I started Ground Control. Because working with these entrepreneurs, I realized that despite age, people don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they're not sure what they want to happen, what they want to build. And sometimes it's really good to have a sounding board. And one thing that we often motivate these entrepreneurs is that they should have a good understanding of what they're trying to build. Whether it's just a general knowledge of footwear, it's really good because you bounce from there. So this, you would have a better understanding of this. So the design is pretty much your idea on the sketch. And it's not just drawing something. It also still has a story. It still has an inspiration. It still encompasses that big idea concept. But this time, you have to make it a little bit more creative. This time, you have to inculcate um, the aspect of, you know, materials and specifications of it all. But it's very, very good to have that understanding of design. Okay. So in time, we also were able to work with MPC in regards to design through this MPC paper prototyping. Um, I think this was through during 2019. And we were very glad that your students are very creative and are very capable of, of expressing themselves through footwear. And we also were able to work with the faculty members under the Shoe and Leathercraft um, Center in understanding 
the basics of shoemaking. So I'll turn this over as we move forward to the design to Mako. I'll stop my sharing. Yes, guys. Are you okay, guys? Are you done? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. You can start with the design. Oh, okay. Hi. Hello, guys. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, guys, for that very powerful um, uh, talk about how marketing is, for me, like I started also in marketing. So I kind of worked with Russell Lopez before as a marketing. Pero, you know, I think it also teaches me how important um, the techniques on how are you gonna sell something so for you to to create something you also have the knowledge to sell it so anyway so let can i share my screen so good afternoon hi guys hello maraming salamat sa pag-invite um um working a polytechnic uh so let me share my share my screen Hey, so so thank you again, MPC, for inviting us. So design and you know create footwear. Um, so you know our 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 feet is actually composed of almost it's a, it's almost twenty five percent of our um it's actually 25 percent of the bones in our body right so there's like actually 26 26 bones 33 joints and then it's seven ligaments and 19 muscles and tendons so it's like total would probably be around um 185 so the reason why I wanted to come up with you know something like this is just for you to remember. Okay, so one eight five, those are the things that's um in in our in our feet, right? So first one is for you to to come up with like a, probably a career in the creative industry, especially in footwear. One must have their goals, right? Kanina pa natin na set yung um yung goals like uh, ano ba dapat ang pwedeng gawin? Kasi kung hindi ka, hindi mo kasi alam yung pinaka um, patutunguhan mo, paano ka kilos, di ba? So, come up with a goal for like, you know, a day, a week, a month. This is actually not um uh, not uh, uh, about footwear for then. This is like your daily goals, right? Because once you already achieve the goals that you set, miskindi footwear related or miskindi design related, yun yung discipline na talagang mahirap natin ma, ma, makuha. Especially yung mga, mga may background ng mga artist-artist dyan, na, mga umi-emo-emo dyan. So, ako nahihirapan ako mag-come up, but I have to come up with something because, you know, I, I guess, yun yung professional level. So, there. So, First, we come up with goals. With the eight, the mind, it, this one talks about um, talks about the, the, the product. It's, it's about the concept, the design, the prototype, the testing, the pre-production, quality, and production after sale. So, I'm gonna share you some of the the works that actually I did during my um, my me as a creative designer. So, so this is how you come up with a concept and how you kind of parang trigger yourself to 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 push yourself na ano ba kailangan ko ng bagong idea. So, this guy on top is nakita ko nagka-carga siya ng sako. It's just like along with the Avenue. One time I was driving to work. 
Then sabi ko, sige, I'll probably have to come up with something. So this one, pinasa baba, it's made out of net uh, and leather for the handle. So this one, I call it bug net, right? So tama yung sinabi ni Unix and tama din yung sinabi ni Glyce about um, the, uh, what Glyce uh, mentioned kanina is the experience of you coming up with an original idea it's actually derived from experience. So without those experiences, you can come up with the original idea, right? And and tama din yung sinasabi ni uh, Unix kanina about how are you gonna come up with um with something kung hindi mo naman uh, ipopos yung sarili mo, hindi mo siya pipilitan, right? So design, like let's talk about design. The design is it's everywhere. Right, so this is a pair of uh, yakan yakan uh, derbies that I designed before. This is the prototype. Is uh, it comes after after you you know try to do a sketching, but so this is like uh, I'm I'm showing you like some of the the, the works that that create uh, that I created during the past years. So this is L that is made out of water lily. So and this is like testing the mind is how are you gonna make sure that the design is actually workable and um uh, it fits right so chapre uh, coming up with the design you need to come up with i mean you need to have a team with you like not necessarily engineers a team of engineers but somehow um so this is like a, a fashion show in canada uh, I, I, uh, the shoes is uh, by, by, by me. So the pre-production is um, you have to test if you are actually uh, capable to do a, a mass production of your design. So again, um, I think right now Marikina has a strong, um, uh, in terms of, of a strong support in terms of um, production in terms of coming up with with uh, your designs, making it into reality, just like you know Zapatira helped me with my lalapatas. Quality is um is very important, lalo na dun sa mga magsispat, because if you don't uh, check on the quality, wala baka hindi na umula, especially that you're starting. So most of the shoes that that's that's parang um has quality in it are are handmade, ba? But like Siyempre, pag handmade, just make sure na tama yung sukat mo na bago siya going quality work. So production is, that's actually another thing. But I guess right now, pwede naman yung miskin 12 pairs lang, ba? This one is actually a collaboration um, using the foil, the Zesmo foil. And after sale. So um, five things that I, I think... Um, What's important I have to discuss is like this is about you as the creative, the 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 person, the designer itself, right? So first is you have to have your you have to be dedicated with, with what you do. And then second, you have to get a mentor for you to know what and ba tamo ba yung ginagawa mo. Because I I think yin talaga eh, um we need a we need a sense hey. Diba? Vulnerability comes Ito na yung parang design, like if you can't think of anything, I feel that you know, being vulnerable is the right way. Vulnerable meaning uh, you have to accept kung ano ba yung weaknesses mo. Because if you don't accept the weaknesses, you can't see you know, um, a future possible award-winning design. Katulad ng Shera, kanina na na-share, ba? Like sustainability is like, it's it's... It can be, it's up to you, but like some people to say they value sustainability right now, especially those who love, um, those who are very, uh, and with, with echo living in echo life, especially right now, na, medyo na, na wala na nga yung, um, na ano yung energy natin na you use na. And then collaboration for me is really the, the future for me. The, uh, the reason why you find collaboration is the key. The, it's because pag medyo um yun at yun lang din ang um ginagawa mo all the time parang tingin ko nagsasawa yung tao 
Like, if you will check social media, before it was Facebook, hanggang naging Instagram, and now it's TikTok. If you check TikTok, it's parang nai-entertain ka for like over a second, right? So, ganun na ka, kalimitado yung, yung um, ano ng tao, uh, yung, I forgot the term, but anyway, yeah, parang, uh, hindi na nila, wala na sila masyadong focus, especially the generation now. Parang gusto nila, kailangan makuha mo na sila in just like few seconds. So, I guess, coming up with, you know, two heads are all uh, are always better than one you know an idea with another person it's yeah it's collaboration right so yeah so i'm going to show you next like some of the works that uh, i think kanina medyo umangat yung stories purpose diba so yeah like the mentorship so this is most of these are uh, the Fashion Design Council of the Philippines. So when you're probably um, in your professional field, you can actually apply. There's also for shoes, but this one is for the entire, uh, the, they call it the council. So this is our, our show in in Tokyo. So and just a few mentors and friends. Yeah. So this is what durability needs. Yeah. So let me share a story about this. I call it the day dinosaur shoes. So dinosaur shoes. The anyway. So the name the the dinosaur shoes is actually a story. Is it's it's from uh, land before time. Na when I was when I was I don't know when I was but when I was a kid, uh, when I was a film na naiyak ako is because of you know the si Bigfoot lost the the family, right? Um, so, so yun. Like, it parang triggers me na parang why not design something that, you know, involves dinosaurs <laughs> but not necessarily ulo ng dinosaur yung lalagin ko sa You know, for me, I I want it elegant. I want it, you know, has the dinosaur feel but not necessarily dinosaur. The, this one, I call it Trichilitops. The Trichilitops is like uh, Triceratops. <laughs> So there. So this is like my version of a tiptoe, but it's like a it's a rhino. They are yeah. This is rhino, rhinos, 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 rhino shoes. I think <laughs> yeah. So this is um, another uh, concept about like the the passing of my dog because parang lumabas nito is um, the inspiration is. From from this is the paw of the dog. So the if you can see the thread, I use a foil. So if you check hashtag lalapatos, this is actually the mother of lalapatos. I wanted to come up with uh, somehow. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, it seems that we lost a uh, connection. Uh, our speaker actually is Sir Mako Custodio. Uh, just a brief introduction. 
He is a world-renowned and award-winning artist from uh, known for his unique, impactful designs that have become trendsetters ahead of some of the world's most popular and high-end brands. He is best known for upcycling snack wrappers like Zesto, Yatos, and turning them into most beautiful bags. He sees beauty, depth, and function in things that many of us do not no normally see. He transforms what would have otherwise treated as trash into something useful and classic. Moreover, he aims to help the, uh, help the local micro communities thrive and survive, cultures that, that are in danger of being forgotten, he revives. Currently, he's working with BDI Region 6 for an online coaching for product development using local materials such as barrio, buri, and abaca. Also with DTI Sambuanga for their wearable and some non-wearable categories such as yakan fabrics turned into bags, hats, and shoals. This year, he collaborates with companies and brands on research and development that champions sustainability, recycling, and upcycling. So, is Sir Marco, uh, is his uh, connection okay now? Okay, so while waiting for uh, Sir Marco, uh, maybe we can call on uh, Dr. Wilma Balbarais, the director of Shoe and uh, Shoe and Leathercraft Development uh, Center, to announce the uh, Shoe Design Contest Guidelines. Ma'am Wilma. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon to Ms. Santa Ana and Ms. Glais. And Sir Marco, we are waiting for you. Ah. Can I share the ano, Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Nakaka-excite itong uh, shoe design contest na ito, ma'am Dr. Balbarais. No? Parang ito lang ang ating contest this week-long celebration. At uh, syempre, yung mananalo dito, ang ganda ng premyo. Yeah. Yung uh, mamaya ay anong si Dr. Balbaray. Sige, ma'am, uh, Wilma? And ito yung first time natin na, ano, na we will have uh, si MPC uh, Shoe and Leather Craft um, Design Contest. So I think andito na si Sir Mako. Ah, okay, ma'am. Ma so we're going to ano, excite muna yung our students about doon sa ating uh, shoe design contest. So let's call on back uh, Sir Mako Custodio. Sir, good afternoon. I'll stop my slides. Hello. Hi. Yes. Hello. Can you guys hear me well? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Sir Mako. Is my can you guys hear me? Uh, we can hear you, Paul. Okay, great. No, sorry. I'm actually in Batangas right now. The joint signal natin talaga medyo play. Uh, okay, so let me can I share my screen yes, again? Sir. Sorry yes, guys sir. for the ano. All right. Okay, right, so, so here, okay, there. So this one is like what, what I'm saying kanina is um, it's a, it's a shoes that uh, had, we had to exhibit it in London for London Fashion Week. So this one has a, has a real nose. So if you can, you know, check hashtag IFS 2016. So that's the at the time that we exhibit kami sa, sa London. So now everything is like by by a hashtag you can check. So and talking about sustainability, um, I think as as also an, an educator, uh, we wanted to really parang uh, how do I call it like inculcate you know the concept of sustainability in the in the new um in the in Gen Zs, you know, in the in the future of in the future uh, create creative people. So para at least, diba, we come up with something na talagang wala na talaga siyang waste stage. I mean, all of us, sure, pag produce ka, there's waste stage. But I think what's important is 
we have to be mindful of of the things that we waste, the things that, that our processes, those things. So these are just um, uh, bags made out of Zesto. This is actually uh, where the entire uh, hashtag Galapatos is actually parang na, na, na pick up the concept. So, so I also like, did some leather before. Here is like, ito yung gulong ng ginagamit normally sa parikina, di ba? Pag bibili kayo ng, ng sapatos. So there. So kanina, I was saying that collaboration is actually, I think, the future. So it's like some works that collaborated with. So the reason why I'm showing this is that pag sinabi mo kasi shoe designer, parang nab nabablock kayo na baka ah, puro shoes na yung gagawin ko. Of course, no. Like, as a creative person, you have anything that's important, you can actually create things na parang hindi lang puro kids shoes. Because, you know, eventually, you can actually come up with shoes that's made out of harness. Diba? Shoes na kamukha ng mask. Yun yung mag maganda sa creative, uh, being a creative person. Hindi talaga tayo dapat um, nabablock na ito ang pinaka ano natin. So these are some of the things. So this is a collaboration with Rack of Ages. So we call it Botakong. Right? So ito yung bota na may takong. So most of the shoes sa Rack of Ages are, are, are made by, by me. Uh, so this one naman is a collaboration for a film. So ito yung parang tipong they have to come up with shoes na mukhang sinauna. So talagang ito, sinerear ko yung pag-stitch, pag paggawa. So, yan yung itsura niya, di ba? So, para at least medyo nag, nag, ano siya, with the, hindi mukhang may swelas yung sapatos. Here what? So, there. So, so yun. Like, hindi, hindi porkit na nag, um, leather kayo, hindi lang kayo mag-leather, hindi lang, sorry, hindi kayo mag-design lang ng sapatos, okay? It can be mag-design kayo ng also or anything to do with leather. So, I think as a creative person, it allows me to make more interesting designs for shoes since meron din akong um, uh, uh, outlet to do other things using the my medium, which is leather, right? So this is for Nellas for like some of the collaborations. These are like some of the shoes na na dinisain ko before way way back. So the the reason why I'm um I want you to see this is because for you to come up with a design, kailangan mo nang magsusuot. Katulad yung sinabi kanina, ah, di ba? Kailangan mo nang muse. Para kanino ba? Baka naman kasi yung yung design mo na sapatos is like, it's, hindi pala siya, so, sobrang concept siya na hindi pala siya masusuot. So, huwag naman ganun. I think, it, eventually, you have to come up with shoes na, na, na susuot. So this is the this the heels are made out of tilapia skin. Sorry, pirate fish skin. So some of the shoes. So let me tell you a story about this. So this is actually call it shoe number two, the, the second na design ko. The concept uh is I am inspired with a girl sitting sa isang stool. So nakita mo, iyan yung parang yun yun yung legs niya nakaupo siya sa stool. So so yeah, concept is you know practically anywhere. <laughs> yeah, or you can also design shoes. So this is from Brazil, the shoes na. So makita mo, miski mo siyang furniture. Nasusuot pa din siya. <laughs> so, so yeah. Call me crazy, pero I think um, while you were still young, 
I think you come up with crazy ideas because <laughs> it's still going to be valid. Pero pag matanda na katulad ko ngayon, nag-design pa ako ng ganun, parang wala na siya. So, I think pag nasa early, um, late, nine, late teen years mo and early 20s, create, create, you know, create. Don't waste whatever. Basta, kahit ano lang, not necessary shoes. But, but if you can be handy, you know, you can stitch your own or uh, pwede kang mag-invest on, uh, you know, just coming up with uh, asking uh, online, YouTube, learning, you know, a craft, a skill, that would be amazing. So, so there. So I, I guess I'm just you know trying to uh, like come up with. Um, I like colors. I like how everything is. If you have any um questions later, please with with how you come up with your concept. That would be amazing. I, you know, I wanna talk to you regarding kung paano ba talaga magkama up ng idea, right? So here, let me just show you this. This one is called taal because you can see the the wedge. It's, it looks like the taal. This one is pampanga because of the parol. This is Cebu. Well, the reason why it's like that, pag tumapak siya. There's the cross, so you know, like where Magellan's cross is actually in Cebu, right? This is Banawe, the low Banawe. The outsoles are actually, and this is the high one. This is the Makole. This is made from mga discarded. Since I'm, I was doing mga made to order shoes up ago. I wanted to come up with something that I can use all the leather then because kid skin is really expensive. So, so sabi ko, sige, let's, let's see. Yeah, so this is my first, uh, I know, outside. This is in Italy. And of course, the Inana Kapati, the Celine, the shoes, this one is the Jipatos. Yeah, so, not much done with. So this is sketch of the Botafong that you can like, So, you know, like, I think it's really everywhere. So we were in a coffee shop and have a course jewel shoes. Oh, this is just like, I think the idea that I'm thinking. Yeah, so yeah. So, yeah. So, for me, live design transform lives, right? So, so there. Um, yeah. So, uh, do we still have time for some activities or? Uh, sure, Marco. Actually, at 2 o'clock, we're going to have the next webinar. Okay. 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 Great. Great. So if there's like a Q and A, you know, would like to, you know, there's, I'm, I'm pretty much done. So the, the remaining time, we could probably have like Q and A if there's a Q and A. Okay, thank you so much, sir, Mako and uh, Miss Unix. Uh, so uh, let me read if there are questions on the chat box, or if you have any question, just raise your hand. Use the reaction button. I think uh, there is no questions for Mako and Mam um, Unix. Wow. Thank you so much, Miss um, uh, Unix and Sir Mako and our friends from the industry for sharing your expertise uh, to our uh, students. And we are very excited about the future uh, contributions of our students to the shoe industry, not only in Marikina, in the Philippines, but worldwide. Again, uh, thank you so much uh, po. Uh, we hope na magkaroon tayo na mas mahaba pong uh, webinar about uh, shoe design in the future. At yan ay paghahandaan ni Director Wilma 
uh, Balbarais. Now, to formally close our webinar, may I call in our hardworking uh, Dean of Teacher Education, our beloved Dean Olive Delfino. Ma'am Olive, good afternoon po. Ma'am Olive, uh, kindly unmute po. Naka-mute po yung mic ni Ma'am Olive. Okay. Ayan. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Um, I was intently um, listening to the talk of all the speakers. No? Um, I'd like to thank everyone from Miss Unique Santa Ana to Miss Glyce, Miss Carla, and Mr. Mako Custodio for sharing valuable insights and encouraging NPCians to venture into the shoe business. Um, dun sa mga nakita po namin mga designs nyo, from concept to prototyping and even yung um, uh, mga fashion and catwalk nyo, uh, we were really inspired to design shoes. Actually, I'm a professor of garments fashion and design. And um, uh, also a recipient, Ma'am Unique, I'm also a recipient of the Zapateria uh, training way back December 2019. So uh, I would really, um, uh, I, I really appreciate uh, the insights and the um, participation of the industry in this uh, very valuable uh, webinar. So um, I'd like to uh, share again uh, some key takeaways uh, from the webinar. So sana po uh, lahat ng mga students nandito, you were able to um, understand and um Take it to heart kung ano yung mga dapat nyong natutunan sana dito sa webinar na ito. And um, sa, sa talk ni, ni Ma'am Carla, she made mention of three important um, uh, um, concepts which Open starts from research. So sana po sa researches nyo, makita nyo doon kung ano talaga yung inyong market, anong mga competitor, and you should be passionate with your designs. <laughs> And um, of course, collaboration is very important. Because, um, kung halimbawa, hindi naman tayo uh, marunong ng paggawa mismo ng sapatos, it's important that we will be able to transmit our ideas to our developers or yung mismo gagawa ng ating mga designs. May it be a shoe o kaya naman yan ay sapat, uh, yan ay um, accessories, no mga bags or leather goods no kailangan marunong tayong makipag-collaborate we have to communicate with our team no maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat so i i will be um <laughs> i will be uh, shortening my my talk because um i i believe um naghihintay na po ang mga susunod na mag uh, web webinar from the osa uh, office no so um Nagpapasalamat po ako akong uli sa lahat ng mga nag-participate po dito sa ating webinar. Ma'am Wilma, thank you for organizing this. And um, alam ko yung ating mga students na gustong sumali sa shoe design was very were very much inspired sa so, napakaraming designs na nakita nila from our uh, from the slides of our speakers, no? Lalong lalo na yung mga sustainable shoes and accessories galing kay Sir Mako. Ma Sir Mako, thank you very much po sa inyo. Na? So without further ado, maraming maraming salamat po Ma'am Wilma, the organizers po, ang Shoe Leathercraft external linkages. And um, I hope everyone will be uh, integrating all these learnings sa inyo pong pag-aaral ngayong second semester. No? And goodbye and um, stay safe po sa lahat. Thank you so much, uh, Dean Delfino. Uh, the evaluation link for this webinar is already shared on our chat box. Kindly accomplish this uh, uh, Google form for you to have your certificate of participation. And while waiting for the next webinar, uh, Dr. Balbarais will be playing the mechanics uh, of our shoe design contest. Ma'am Wilma?
these uh, guidelines will be posted also on our Facebook page, MPC uh, Facebook page. So for those who are interested to join the shoe design contest, you may check the guidelines posted on our Facebook, official Facebook page of Marikina Polytechnic College. Wow, the grand prize is 2000 and certificate. And of course, the, uh, the bragging right of having your design to be used as the new design of our uh, giant shoe display. Open to all MPC students. Okay, you can have uh, two entries. Okay, uh, with that, we thank you so much for participating in our uh, shoe design and making webinar. Again, we thank our speakers, our partner from Zapateria, and our friends from the shoe industry. Congratulations to the organizers, uh, Mom Wilma, uh, the S SDLC, to the external linkages office. This has been uh, Sir Jomel Bautista saying good afternoon. And keep safe, stay healthy. God bless us all. And Ma'am Criselda, I'm passing the mic Hello, to Ma'am Criselda. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ma'am. Hello. Okay. So we still have two minutes, right? Are, are these the yes, same, one of us, same participants? Or are we expecting more participants? So we are expecting more participants, uh, especially the graduating students. Ah, okay. We will just have to wait for the participants, the graduating students, but we'll begin in five minutes.
Mr. Jomel, are you there? MPC. Ako po si Susana P. Magtubo. Kilala din ang kabilang konsihal. Judy Magtubo ng Marikina. I am Dr. Grant B. Cornell. Presently the Vice President for Research Extension in International Affairs of the Unoyo Amang Rodriguez Institute of Science and Dr. Emma Esquivel Lina, proud and grateful alumna of Marikina Polytechnic College. Dr. Elizalde Q. Sena, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Industrial Education, major in Electrical Technology. I am Dr. Elvira Reyes Conese from Marikina Institute of science and technology. I am Elia Santos, an alumnus of Marikina Polytechnic College. I took a four-year course of Bachelor of Industrial Technology, major in food and service. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, our dear graduating students, colleagues, guests from the Commission on Higher Education, and to our resource speaker. Welcome to our webinar, Facing the Challenges of Online Job Application of Technology Graduates in the New Normal. Let us begin the afternoon with a prayer. <laughs> Let me 
Once again, good afternoon. I am Maria Crisel de Santos, your MC for today's session. During the three-hour webinar, kindly keep in mind the following guidelines. All participants must be muted upon entry and during the webinar. Kindly set your Zoom to speaker's view. And yes, you are encouraged to participate during the session. If you have audio issues, please check your Zoom audio settings and your computer speakers. If you still encounter problems, you may try to leave the meeting and join again. Participants may raise a hand during the session and facilitators will send you a private message to address your concern. Participants are not allowed to record this webinar. Only the host is allowed to record for documentation purposes. Uploading screenshots of slides is highly discouraged. And as part of the Data Privacy Act, please inform the host if you do not want to be seen during group photo at the end of the session. Now, without further ado, let us welcome our Vice President for Administration and Finance, Mrs. Pagasa Emerita Miranda, for her opening remarks. Thank you, Ma'am Griselda. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Griselda. At magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. I take pride in celebrating this 27th uh, founding anniversary of CHED today and the first National Higher Education Day tomorrow. You know, my heart is filled with joy and excitement, my dear graduating students. As I see your faces, napakarami nyo kasi, as, as I see your faces, uh, these awesome faces contribute a part of history of MPC. Bakit? One, because this is our first pre-employment webinar. Ito ang una nating pre-employment webinar. Pangalawa, we are lucky. The college is lucky because, um, lucky and thankful because uh, um, we have our speaker who is a part of MPC. 
lagi siyang nandyan, lalo na pag ini-invite siya lagi. And you will know kung bakit siya naging part ng MIST. And in behalf of the MPC management, I would like to thank all of you for having us witness this uh, well-coordinated program. Welcome everybody for this first pre-employment webinar for graduating students. Rest assured that we will continue to support and serve you, our dear students, the best that we can. Again, magandang hapon at mabuhay ang MPC. Thank you, Mrs. Miranda, for the inspiring words. This time, may I call in Mrs. Maria Lourdes S. Bruno, OIC Head for Guidance and Counseling Services, to introduce our research speaker for this webinar. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Our webinar resource speaker is a certified multi-awarded HR professional a certified life coach, a certified employment interview practitioner, a certified professional manager, a radio broadcaster, and a social media influencer. He is a graduate of a uh, Bachelor of Science in Sociology at Polytechnic University of the Philippines and has finished a post-baccalaureate diploma in industrial relations at UP Soler. He has more than 20 years of progressive professional management experience in BPO, IT, shared services industries, both in operations management and human capital management. He has multiple experiences in setting up the HR department and startup companies, both local and international. He possesses core competencies in talent acquisition, sourcing, recruitment, marketing, and branding, employee engagement, labor relations, training and organizational development, corporate policy formulation, and HR operations functions. He has extensive theoretical and functional knowledge and hands-on experience in managing labor relations crisis and handled multiple cases in DOLE, NLRC, labor courts up to closure. He is also experienced in managing a team of more than 30 team members and handling HR-related concerns of medium size and large organizations, 250 to 15,000 FTEs. And he has work exposure in um, partnering and working with regional HR across US, Canada, Middle East and Asia Pacific region. He is a member of good standing with different local and international HR organizations and human resource associations and networks. He is also conducting public training programs and in-house corporate training programs tied up with different e HR event and management organizations. He is also the founder and president of Philippines HR Group, the largest Philippine online community of HR professionals in Facebook, with more than 255 online members as of May 2021, and registered nonprofit learning organization under SEC, which provides public learning events to the Filipino HR community. He is also a radio broadcaster under DZRJ 810 AM radio for the School Life radio program and top rated FB Live program, the HR Cafe, Trabaho Buhay at Iba Pa, an online talk show program. His areas of expertise include 
customer relationship management, business partnering, customer service excellence, situational thought leadership, talent acquisition, total rewards, shared services operations, employee engagement, labor relations, process improvement and innovations, management and leadership development, and public speaking. His most recent engagements include being one of the panelists in a global speaker event held in Saib Nadar University in Delhi, India, with a theme, Global Hiring Trends, Challenges and Opportunities on May 4, 2021. And on May 1, 2021, our speaker also guested at CNN Philippines at the MedTalk Health Talk Program for their episode on corporate health. His most recent professional awards and recognitions include Pillar of Youth Leadership Award, national award given by the National Youth Commission and YPPA, awarded in, 20, in 2018 uh, in Davao. HR Leadership Award recipient of the Philippines Best Employer Brand Awards 2019, awarded in Dusit Tani Hotel, Makati City. LinkedIn Top 11 from the Top 100 Filipino Influencers in LinkedIn 2019, Top 501 Global HR Leader of the World Award, awarded at the 25th World HRD Congress, given in Mumbai, India. LinkedIn Top 8 from the Top 100 Filipino Influencers in LinkedIn in 2020. At present, our resource speaker is the Senior Director of Shared Services, Talent Acquisition, HR Facilities and Administration. As a leader of the Shared Services Organization, he works with senior executive teams as well as business and corporate leaders to, to address the organization's critical focus on enhancing the customer experience, operational discipline, and company-wide areas of scalability and efficiency. Performance Improvement Service Enhancement and Product Development. His professional affiliations are CCAP HR Council, January 2020 up to present, International Federation of Professional Managers, the Philippines HR Group, Founder and President, July 2014 up to present, HR Gateway Group, ASEAN HR Network, Philippine Society for Training and Development, HR Philippines Organizations, Events and Marketing Committee, Exec Eco Rescue Volunteers Foundations, Eco Volunteer, United Nations Online Volunteer, uh, Kapisana ng Talino at Galing, National Youth Parliament Alumni Association. Uh, friends and my dear students, we are very fortunate to have with us a very highly esteemed and indefatigable guru in the field of human resources, who happens also to be my former student way back in 1994 during his high school in MIST. So let us give a very warm virtual applause to our webinar resource speaker, Mr. Darwin B. Rivers. Hello, hello, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Hello, good afternoon, Ma'am Bruno. Magandang hapon po sa lahat ng nakikinig at uh, nakasubaybay sa ating webinar for today. Nako, napakahaba naman po ng introduction ni Ma'am Bruno sa akin. Uh, simple lang po, ako po ay graduate ng Marikina Institute of Science and Technology. I am batch 1994. At um, tuwing may pagkakataon po na na mag-share ng aking experience and knowledge uh, at na naiimitihan po tayo sa, sa aking alma mater ay eh, uh, malugod ko po talaga at masaya ako na 
may pagkakata o makibahagi sa mga programang tulad nito. So, hello, hello everyone. Um, should I share my screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just give me a few sec. Um, Let me just... Ah, here. Okay. Okay. Are you guys seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Kita po. Okay, good, good. Okay, so when I was invited by Mom Bruno, um, she mentioned that um, the most of the attendees of this webinar will be graduating students of the Marikina Polytechnic College. So um, there, we, we've been discussing about what will be the title of our discussion or webinar. And last minute, I decided that since uh, we are focused on equipping fresh graduates or newly graduates, paano ba sila magiging successful sa pag apply nila ng trabaho, sa pagpasok nila sa corporate world? So um, I decided that uh, the topic for today's webinar will be about tools and guides in pursuing a career for fresh graduates. Okay. So, what are the discussion or what will be our agenda for today? Ang agenda po natin ay unang-una, pag-uusapan po natin what are the myths of the working world by fresh graduates. Ano nga ba yung ano yung mga myth na iniisip ng mga normally ng mga fresh graduates uh, sa pagpasok nila sa corporate world? Pag-uusapan din po natin or we'll also be discussing about what are the top misconceptions of hiring managers with regards to graduates of the new normal. So as you know, um, over the past two years or since last year, um, a lot of graduates have entered into the workforce wherein they graduated through virtual learning or modulized learning. So alam natin ano ba yung tingin ng mga employers or ng mga hiring managers patungkol sa mga graduates na ito. We'll also be discussing how you'll be able to prepare your resume, how to ace the, in the job interview, and also what is the onboarding process and it's a special request by Mam Bruno will be discussing about intro to workers' rights. And finally, we'll be discussing about how to start a successful career. So as you know, napakarami pong agenda po natin for Today. And um, normally this will take a whole day of discussion, but I will try my best to add value to this webinar uh, and ensure that uh, we'll provide you the gist or the fine points of each and every topic of my agenda. Okay, so ano nga po ba yung 10 minutes of the working world by fresh graduates? Or and this is based on a research. Ano nga ba yung mga um, uh, myth or or mga iniisip ng mga bagong graduate kung sila ay mag apply ng trabaho? Unang-una is, what is your passion after graduating college? Or maybe, um, we need to ensure that uh, pagka-graduate natin, alam mo natin kung ating gagawin. Totoo ba ito na kailangan alam natin ang ating gagawin uh, once nakagraduate tayo? Ngayon ko lang pinapaalam sa inyo. By the way, uh, for those people who are listening and watching right now, I would like to please ask, so please mute your, uh, your microphone so that we'll be able to have a very good discussion will be able to have a clear discussion kasi may marami pong ano alam ko uh, a lot of you guys are excited to to actually learn from this webinar um and i know that uh kanina yung yung speaker niya kanina si Mr. Maho Custodio is a very good friend of mine at alam ko marami kayong natutunan kay Maho and i would also like to ensure that you have a very good learning experience so i would please like to ask you to please mute 
uh, your desktops or your laptops as we go through this webinar, okay? And if you have any questions, we will, I'll be happy to discuss and answer those questions late, later. So again, and what are the 10 myths of the working world by fresh graduates? Una is, kailangan daw dapat pag nakagraduate ka, alam mo na yung passion mo. Totoo po ba to na kailangan pagkagraduate mo, alam mo na kung saan industry ka o ano may yung trabaho mo. Is that a requirement? Number two, your major dictates your work. So sinasabi dito na isa sa mga myths ay dapat daw kung ano yung kursong uh, natapos mo sa iyong uh, pag-aaral sa kolehiyo or pag-aaral sa eskwela, yun dapat lang ang pinukurso mo after mo makagraduate. Another myth is companies prefer experienced employees. Um, mas may preferential treatment daw that uh, ang mga experienced employees. So, paano naman daw ang mga graduates? Paano sila magkakaroon ng experience at paano sila makakapag-land ng trabaho kung ang hinahanap ng mga kumpanya ay mga experienced employees lamang? Another myth is top college and university graduates are the priority hires. Excellent grades, easy career. Kailangan daw mataas ang grades mo para may make sure na maganda ang maging trabaho mo after college or after uh, you start applying for work. Ito, uh, one of my favorites, knowing someone is the key to land a good job. Kailangan daw may kilala ka sa isang kumpanya para magkaroon ka ng opportunity na ma-hire ng isang kumpanya. Job rejection shows how unemployable you are. So sinasabi, isa sa mga myth is, um, pag palagi ka daw na nare-reject sa pag-a-apply mo, ibig sabihin, wala ka na talagang kapag-apag-asa magkaroon ng trabaho at mag-establish ng career. And there are no available work vacancies. We're in a pandemic right now. Maraming company nagsara, wala daw available trabaho para sa mga fresh graduates. And lastly, large salaries um, are always fun. Or only companies that provide salaries or high salaries are the ones that you should be applying. And then, last but not the least, on the 10 myths of the working world, for fresh graduates, AR, top companies are always the best place to work and to grow your career. Dapat daw mag-focus ka sa mga top companies, sa mga Fortune 500 companies, kasi dun ka lang magtututo. Okay? Mga kaibigan, for all the people who are listening and watching right now, these are myth. Hindi po totoo ang mga nakasulat sa mga ganito. Ibig sabihin, um, although ito ay karaniwang iniisip ng mga fresh graduates or ng mga bagong graduates sa kolehiyo, uh, ito po ay pawang uh, haka-haka lamang at hindi po ito katotohanan. Unahin po natin, knowing your passion after graduating college, hindi nyo po kailangan alam kung ano yung passion nyo uh, after graduating. Ibig sabihin is, uh, kasi normally pag, pag fresh graduates ka after mong matapos ang, ang two years, three years, or four years course mo, di ba? Uh, Iniisip mo pa lang, ano ba yung gusto kong mangyari? So hindi, or ano ba yung gusto kong uh, trabaho? Or what kind of job do, would I prefer pursuing after, after college? So you are given... Hello, sir. I think the disconnect si Sir Rivers. Either the disconnect or nag freeze yung kanyang frame. Let's wait for him to come back.
PC. Ako po si Susana P. Magtubo. Kilala din ang kabilang konsihal Judy Magtubo ng Marikina. I am Dr. Grant B. Cornell, presently the Vice President for Research Extension and International Affairs of the Yoloyo Amang Rodriguez Institute of Science and Dr. Emma Esquivel Lina. Proud and grateful alumna of Maritina Polytechnic College. Dr. Elizalde Q. Sena, a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Industrial Education, major in Electrical Technology. I am Dr. Elvira Reyes Conese from Maritina Institute of Science and Technology. I am Amia Santos an alumnus of Marikina Polytechnic College. I took a four-year course of Bachelor of Industrial Technology, major in food and service. Hello, I'm back. Hello. Hello, Kaya sir. Na Sorry, nako. Mukhang nagka, nagka problema tayo sa ating connection. Um, ang hirap talaga pag live, no? So, I hope that uh, we're, we're okay. Are, are, are we back online? Are, are you guys seeing my screen already? Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Uh, may, may I know? Ano ba yung last last natin na, na ano, last nyong nakuha? Uh, natapos ba natin yung ano, 10 myths uh, of the working world? Uh, yes, sir. Graduates? Okay. Um, and, uh, saan, saan, saan ako naputol? I think, sir, dito sa dulo, sa top companies are always the best place to work. Okay. Sige. Um, again, uh, sa 10 myths of the working world by fresh graduates, um, sinasabi na top companies are always the best place to work and to grow your career. So, ibig sabihin, uh, marami ang nagsasabi na, na dapat daw mag ka lang ng career mo or mag-join ka lang ng companies na ano, na yung mga sikat at mga malaking companies, yung mga Fortune 500 companies kasi doon ka lang matututo at doon ka lang magkakaroon ng magandang uh, career in life. Now, again, in ulit ko, I, I'm not sure if narinig niyo po kanina, lahat po yung nakikita niyo ngayon Yung 10 myths of the working world by fresh graduates, lahat po ito ay pawang haka-haka lamang, pawang iniisip lamang na normally ng mga fresh graduates. Ibig kong sabihin, wala pong katotohanan lahat ng mga nakikita nyo ngayon. Una-una, knowing your passion after graduating college, hindi nyo po kailangan alam kaagad kung ano yung gusto nyong gawin. Or you, you don't even have to know in the onset what you really want to do after graduating. You are given time to actually figure out and understand, ano ba talaga yung gusto kong i-pursue? Ano ba yung gusto kong gawin sa buhay ko? Right? Second is, your major dictates your work. Hindi po totoo yun. We've seen a lot of people na yung natapos nila na kurso ay hindi po dun sila naging successful. Um, I've seen a lot of people who are uh, in different fields, uh, particularly in, in, in the medical fields who shifted uh, to a, a career in the BPO industry, a career in, in, in food and beverage industry, and they were very successful. So, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi dapat maging hadlang na graduate ako ng gantong kurso, itong industry lang ako po pwede magiging successful. That's not true. Hindi yung totoo na companies prefer experienced employees. Kasi, we all know that um, spent four years in college and during the time that you are uh, during the time that you are studying, although theoretical ang pinag-aaralan nyo yung activities nyo in your school or in your in your university has helped you grow as a person. 
and these experiences will actually help you in your work. Okay? Top colleges and universities are priority hires. Hindi po rin totoo yun. Do you know that for the past three years, there have been a job street survey that uh, employers prefer come, uh, or, uh, graduates from uh, public colleges and universities. At number one po doon ang Polytechnic University of the Philippines. At sa halang po uh, sumunod ang mga top universities like UP, Ateneo, uh, USC. Ibig po sabihin ay, ay hindi po porket hindi kayo graduate ng isang kilalang university or kilalang uh, college, ay wala na po kayong pag-asa or wala na or hindi kayo maka-hire. Okay? Hindi rin also requirement yung grades para magkaroon ng magandang trabaho. Right? Grades or good grades would actually help you be considered but it's not uh, the key point for you to land a good career. Okay? At uh, hindi rin po totoo na kailangan lagi kang may kilala sa isang kumpanya para matanggap ka. Kasi ako po um, at napakarami kong kilala ang nag apply sa isang kumpanya na wala po kaming kilala sa kumpanyang pinag a namin pero natatanggap naman po kami. At although it's also important that if you network and if you know a lot of people uh, people inside the organization who can vouch for you is an added asset for you to be hired. But it's not something, it's not a guarantee. Kasi kahit may kilala ka, kung hindi mo naman nami-meet yung requirement and yung skill set na kailangan ng kumpanya, hindi ka rin i-hire. Okay? Uh, job rejection shows how unemployable you are. You know what? For fresh graduates, uh, palagi nyo po itong iisipin. Application is a number game. Um, hindi lahat ng nang a-applyan yung kumpanya or hindi lahat ng kumpanya ang gusto nyong a-applyan ay matatanggap po kayo. And you know what? Uh, even successful people, even people na like me, have been into different kinds of, of rejections one way or another. So what I'm trying to say is it's okay to be rejected in, by companies. What you need to understand is for every rejection, you should be motivated more and you should learn from bakit ba ako sa tingin ko hindi ako natanggap doon sa kumpanyang yun? Ano ba yung mga pwede ko dapat isagot or mga mga dapat kong matutunan tuwing mare-reject ako? Kasi, you know what? Every time na you, you get rejected, believe me, uh, it's more of an exercise. It's like practice. Diba? Na parang every time na, na mag-ano mag, ko interview, mas gumagaling kayo. Right? And you should know, you should be aware of it. Uh, just be aware that kahit na reject kayo, just make sure that you understand uh, what are your areas of improvement or your weaknesses and make sure to do better in your next interview. There are no available work vacancies. Yes, totoo po na pandemic po tayo. Yes, totoo po na uh, there are companies who have closed down. But work is always available. Alam ko po na, na, na for you guys, for fresh graduates, um, you've been seeing in the news that we have high employment here in the Philippines. You know what? Last year, uh, our unemployment went up as uh, high as 17%. Right now, it's only about 4, 4, 5, 3 to 4% uh, because unti-unti na tayo nagbukas ng ating economy, di ba? Um, but still, um, ang sinasabi ko is even in the most challenging times, even in the in, in the times of pandemic or a financial crisis, there will still be companies who will be hiring. Kaya nga sabi ko nga, you don't have to, you don't have to um, uh, uh, kumbaga yung, you don't have to see na napaka, napaka liit lang ng options nyo. Yeah? You, you have to understand that um, there are, companies are still hiring and you have just have to be open. You just have to be open that uh, you might be landing a job that uh, is not aligned to what you've studied in college. Pero andun yung passion mo, dun ka pa nagagaling. Okay? Large companies are always fun. Yes, large companies can actually give you opportunities to learn, to be trained, to have more benefits. Pero hindi po totoo na 
lahat lahat ng large companies would be a good uh, starting ground to start with in your career. You know what? I would always always um recommend people to um if you're not able to pursue uh, a role or a job in your dream companies, then look into startup companies. Look into small and medium-sized companies because these companies na palaki pa lang, they would provide you opportunities. Right? Um, napakaganda yung, yung habang lumalaki yung company, nagiging part ka nila at nagiging uh, you're putting value sa kanilang paglaki at pagundad. At Pag maliit yung kumpanya or small and medium-sized companies, mas maraming responsibilities, mas matututo ka, mas mahahasa ka bilang isang empleyado. Top companies are always the best place to work and grow your career. Sabi ko nga po, hindi po totoo yun. Although top companies can provide you the means, it's not always the case. Uh, small and medium-sized companies or startup companies can also be a good ground for you to grow your career, for you to be able to add uh, and learn more skills and knowledge. Okay? So those are the top 10 myths. Ibig ko sabihin lang dito, wag po natin isipin itong mga myths na to, kasi ito po ay haka-haka lamang. Ito lang po ay narinig natin sa mga uh, uh, pangamba ng mga graduates, sa mga fresh graduates. Okay? Now, also, I would also need to share with you guys, ano ba yung mga misconceptions ng mga hiring managers ngayon. Kasi understand that yes, we are in a pandemic, we are in a global crisis, and uh, mayroong mga certain misconceptions na kailangan nyo tanggapin na meron talaga ang ibang hiring managers. Again, hindi ko nila lahat, but there are certain hiring managers or yung mga mag interview sa inyo or mag sa inyo, meron sila mga misconceptions. At you need to understand this, you need to know this para alam nyo kung papaano nyo o ano ang gagawin nyo para uh, mabura or yung misconception na to or para uh, you're equipped to be able to handle these misconceptions. Number one misconception is fresh graduates lacks the experience needed to understand and easily learn the job. Sinasabi ng iba na, naku, ayoko mag ng fresh graduate kasi wala pa silang experience or wala pa silang understanding ng role. You know what? If you feel that you're, that's a, if you feel that um, yung nag interview sa inyo or yung hiring manager nyo ay uh, gano'n na parang nag siya or nakita niya na fresh graduate ka pa lang, what you need to do is pakita nyo na even though you're a fresh graduate, there are certain activities that or trainings that you've had undergone during college. Either OJT bayan on the job training, uh, either uh, school activities bayan uh, or programs that involved kayo where you are able to shine and uh, hone skills that would be needed for the role. Right? Another misconception of hiring managers right now are Graduates starting 2020 onwards are virtual and module-based learners. They do not have uh, the experience of the normal college university uh, or the normal life experience that uh, uh, colleges and universities provide. Um, it's a reality. I mean, hindi natin, uh, there, is a, there is a possibility talaga na ano na ma-brand kayo na virtual graduate ang naman yan mas madali para sa kanila makagraduate ngayon kasi uh, ang nakagraduate sila hindi naman sila pumasok sa college lahat ng instruction nila virtual lang but you know what rather than think of it as like that show to your uh, interviewer or to your hiring manager that you've actually gone above and beyond just learning virtually make sure that you tell or to show your employer or to their hiring manager that, that you've not only been very diligent in attending virtual classes, but also you've been very diligent in uh, uh, researching more about um, your, your uh, a subject or researching more about a particular skill set for you to be prepared as you go through and uh, as you pass uh, the requirements. Ibig, ibig ko sabihin is 
um, hindi hindi dapat maging hadlang sa inyo yung pag-iisip ng hiring manager na eh, hindi ka naman pumasok sa school eh. virtual lang lahat ng pag pag ano pag uh, pag aaral mo you know what um, understand that in first world countries virtual learning is something that is normal already and um, uh, you just have to prove that even if you graduated through virtual or module based learning you are still able to be at par with those who are who those who graduated na may face to face learning right another misconception that i would like to share with you guys are fresh graduates belong to what we call an entitled generation ito yung mga generation y sila daw yung mga entitled demanding uh, generation and what you need to do is if you erase this because basically for me uh, each and every generation has their own flaws and and um uh, yes this generation is very demanding mainly because they grew up you guys grew up in an environment where everything is easy everything is instant diba? you you grew you grew up that there is uh there is internet um you have all the gadgets you have all the the tools that you can that you can use to actually acquire skills and knowledge but um understand that when you're being interviewed uh, make sure that your projection or kung paano mo sinesell yung sarili mo sa inyong interviewer ay hindi ka you're not demanding you appreciate the value of work you appreciate uh, uh you 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 do not have this entitlement value na kumbaga uh, ini-interview ko pala ang dami mo nang hinihingi ang dami mo nang gustong gawin ang dami mo nang re-request um you have to always understand that uh, when you are fresh graduate you really have to prove yourself first in the organization what value do you bring into the organization okay another misconception of hiring managers right now is fresh graduates are never contented and are job hoppers and are no, when they are no longer happy at work we've been seeing a trend uh, um, hiring managers have been seeing a trend wherein uh, graduates of this generation they tend to hop from one job to another normally months lang normally one one to two years lang nimilipad sa iba't ibang kumpanya um, and well basically as a fresh graduate wala ka pa noon pero para maalis yung cons- yung misconception na yon sa yo na baka mamaya alis ka lang sa kumpanya after ilang months you have to ensure that uh, one you really understand the company you really know the company and you really want to be part of the organization right and you have to convince the people in the organization the person interviewing you that uh, you the reason why you're applying in that particular company is because you really want to grow with them okay now after nating malaman yung uh mix ng mga fresh graduate after nating malaman yung mga misconceptions sa mga hiring managers let's go to oh wait so pala sa pang misconception is fresh graduates are not driven and motivated to work for a company right so ano ba yung motivation and, and motivation in life dapat lumabas yan during the interview right during your discussion with your hiring manager so now alam natin yung top 10 uh, myths na meron ang mga fresh graduates now that alam natin yung top 5 misconceptions sa mga hiring managers no alam natin yung about dalaw- yung yung yung, yung uh, dalawang to paano ba tayo magiging successful sa pag apply natin ng trabaho how can you guys those who, are, who just graduated those who are graduating how can you equip yourself to be successful in your job applications okay so let's go to that particular portion and this would be let's start with your resume now marami nang tatanong sir darwin ano ba ano ba yung difference ng resume cv uh cv or curriculum vitae saka bio data mga kaibigan hindi na po tayo kumak- gumagamit ng bio data ha ang bio data po ay basically isang document na nandoon yung 
uh, information about you per yung education ah uh, yung yung uh, when you say by data uh, information about you height weight uh, religion yung information about you resume is really more of it yung ginagamit pag nagtatrabaho ka diba kasi nandoon naka naka reflect ko ano yung educational background mo ano yung mga skill set mo ano yung mga experiences mo at ano yung uh, the value that you bring to the organization pag CV or or curriculum vitae nako mas mahaba po yan ito po yung talaga yung ano mas detailed mas detailed um mas detailed po siya sa resume kasi talaga hina-highlight ng tao lahat ng kanyang uh, achievements uh, in for the past uh, years na nagwo-work siya at uh, kanyang background. So basically pag fresh graduates ka, pag fresh graduate ka, you're more of a uh, resume, di ba? So paano ba tayo gagawa ng isang magandang resume? For one, you need to understand what the hiring manager is looking for. Na kung mag apply ka ng trabaho, for example, secretary, or for example, admin assistant, or uh, sales assistant, diba? or kahit na anong entry-level work pa yan, understand mo muna, ano ba yung, ano ba yung hinahalap ng kumpanya? Kasi dun mo tailor fit yung resume mo. Ibig sabihin, yung objectives, yung goals mo, at kung paano mo ipipresent yung 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 resume mo ay naayon at may madali para sa hiring manager para talagang ma-convince siya na nako itong taong to ay pasok sa mga requirements ng kumpanya at uh, pasok sa mga hinahanap namin. So don't be afraid to say where you're going. Kaya nga 'di ba um uh, in in a resume may header tayo, may career, may summary or objective. Yung header ng 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 isang resume ito yung Uh, for example, um, fresh graduate uh, who took up uh, um, a fresh graduate who took up a four-year course, let's say in Bachelor of Science and Technology, majoring in let's say business management, uh, who has uh, extensive um, um, work in in uh, on the job trainings, working at Uh, oh, uh, working at different companies. Kung bakit iha-highlight nyo doon, kahit na fresh graduates kayo, fresh graduate kayo, ano yung, ano, ano yung catchy, ano yung, paano yung makakatch yung attention nung, ano, nung mag-review ng resume nyo. Understand that uh, every day, companies would receive hundreds, if not thousands of applications. And your resume needs to stand out. And if you're a fresh graduate, mas lalo na. It needs to stand out and um, you need to make sure that there's a header and some of it objective kung ano yung gusto nyo mangyari at uh, ano yung kaya nyo ibig, uh, kaya nyo gawin sa uh, um, na mag-reflect sa resume nyo. Show some personality. You know what? Um, one of the things that uh, I would normally be asked is, Sir Dar, meron bang template na kailangan gawin pang magpapasa ng resume. There are many templates out there in the market. Mag-google lang kayo, napaharami ng template na, na ano, example na, na, na po pwede yung gamitin. It would really depend kung anong company at kung anong personality yung gusto nyong ilabas doon sa resume nyo. I've seen resumes, I've seen uh, resumes na yung mga graphic artist napaka stand out nung 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 resume nila di ba kasi talagang ano um sobrang sobrang uh, artistic yung paggawa nila yung pag layout nila ng resume nila uh, but what i would i would re- recommend is try to pick a template of a resume na very professional and a template wherein uh kumbaga Um, madaling mabasa from the start kung ano information about you, information about your education, ano yung background mo at mga nagawa mo sa sa, sa college or university at uh, ma-highlight din kung ano yung mga achievements mo at yung uh, extracurricular activities mo. Okay? But make your resume 
visually appealing. I've seen resumes na naka-print sa isang uh, colored paper, naka uh, scented pa nga yung iba. Again, it's really up to you. Just make sure it's visually appealing, it's professional looking, and it should be um, uh, user-friendly. Kung baga, kung ano yung uh, madali siyang intindihin. Right? Normally, pag, 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 pag resume, you have a free hand on how to how to do it, just make sure that you choose a template that will help the person who's reading or reviewing your resume understand that uh, this is the person that I would like to hire. Kasi madali niyang naipakita or nai, uh, naipresent kung ano yung mga qualities and experience niya or background niya na pasok sa requirement ng kumpanya. Ensure your resume shows you are professional and no longer a student. Ang ibig ko sabihin dito, ladies and gentlemen, is before you send out your resume, make sure that tama yung spelling, tama yung grammar, make sure na yung email address nyo, professional looking, huwag kayong gagamit ang email address na, di ba, na, na ginamit nyo pa nung bata pa kayo or something something that uh, would, would, um, uh, paint a different picture of who you are as a person. Um, make sure that uh, you the fonts that you'll be using looks professional. Make sure that everything in your resume will look professional, right? Very. And ako, ako for example, I'm very. I know. Pag may nag-apply sa akin, I'm really reading each and every page of the resume, and I'm very particular also on how the person. Um, uh, uh, uses grammar and punctuations and also made sure that uh, his or her resume uh, looks professional, right? Remember, yung resume nyo, ang una magpapakita at magpapakilala sa inyo dun sa dream job nyo. So, kailangan galingan nyo talaga. Kailangan gandahan nyo talaga yung resume nyo, di ba? Kasi yun ang unang-unang makikita bago talaga kayo kausapin. Nung, nung hiring manager or bago kayo tawagan ng company na gusto nyong maging part of. Key resume to the job description. This is actually a secret. Now, kung nag apply po kayo ng trabaho, tignan nyo yung job description or requirements nung nasa job ad. Kasi normally, di ba, uh, pag nag apply tayo, pag nagpupunta tayo sa job street or tumitingin tayo sa Manila Bulletin or kahit na anong job ads, Nakalagay doon yung not only is the the job post, kasama yung job post is ano yung requirement at yung job description. Na kung walang job description, mag-research kayo about the job description and make sure na yung resume nyo, maipapakita nyo na kaya nyo gawin na fit kayo doon sa job description nung ina-applyan yung trabaho. Okay? Use testimonials, cite achievements and milestones, or highlight pertinent skills. That's the reason why sinasabi ko na hindi porket fresh graduate kayo, wala na kayo ilalagay sa resume nyo. This is actually an opportunity for you to brag any special, uh, any extracurricular activities you've been part of, any projects or activities that you've led or facilitated, um, any experience working, Kung naging working student ba kayo, i-highlight nyo yun. Kasi ako, ako um, I myself was a working student all throughout college and I was able to highlight during my first job interview after graduating, I, I highlight the fact that I was a working student and, and um, I was able to provide, the, 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 convince my employer that uh, being a working student or having been able to be involved in different school activities or have facilitated or attended different trainings, help me to grow as a person. Help me to, to have the skills needed to do the job. Do not stretch out the truth on your resume. Or worse, do not lie any information. Understand that pag nalaman ng kumpanya nyo na naglalay kayo sa resume nyo at lalo sa interview, that can be a uh, a grounds of fraud and that can be a grounds for termination. So just make your resume truthful and concise. And also ask for second opinion. 
whenever you're creating your 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 resume, bawa nakapili na kayo ng template, alam niyo na kung ano yung mga ilalagay niyo at dapat yung ilagay doon sa resume. Kung ba convince ako convince kayo na ito ito yung resume na gusto kong mabasa ng employer ko or ng next employer ko or ng hiring manager. Bago niyo i-send or bago kayo magpasa doon sa company na yon, seek the help of your friends or speak seek the help of your guidance counselor your your uh, career counselor seek the help of of your elders for them to proofread and also for them to uh, provide inputs about the resume that you've created bago mo ipasa sa sa, sa company kasi uh, op- yung, the opinions of of your guidance counselor, your career counselor, or people who've been working already is very important and would provide you uh, a valuable um, uh, inputs for you to either change something or either further improve on your resume. And then after uh creating your final resume also create a cover letter and you know what you don't have to to i know to be very um baga magwo-worry kayo sa paggawa ng cover letter there are a lot of templates available online nung panahon ko kasi wala pang masyado eh um uh pero ngayon di ba there are a lot of information already online you can actually um check different templates for a cover letter and make sure that the cover letter that you would submit together with your resume would really reflect who you are as a person and that would really reflect that you are determined to land job on that particular company, okay? And then when you're sending your resume digitally, kung mag email kayo or magsasubmit kayo ng resume via email, make sure na yung file name nyo I, or lagyan nyo ng file name yung resume. For example, um, uh, CV nyo, di ba? Ang isa-save nyo siya as Word format or as PDF format. Ang gawin nyo is, i- i- ilagay nyo, isave mo siya as name mo, tapos yung job na ina mo as your file name. Right? Para mab- ma- madali siyang makita ng, ano, ng mga employer. Para pag nag- pag if ever na ilagay kay sa pool at mga ilangan kagad, madali nilang ma-search. Okay? And it would also uh, provide a good impression on how how organized you are as a person. Okay? So those are my top 10 resume tips for you guys who would um, who would be graduating. At alam ko may mga tanong po kayo, pero that's uh, go to your questions later on kasi maraya po tayong topic for today. Now, this is really more of not tips for the resume but tips whenever you're doing your interview. Sorry, hindi ko napalitan yung title. These are your top 10 interview tips. Not resume tips, but interview tips. Unang-una is, bago kayo sumabak sa interview, mag-research muna kayo sa company. Right? Kasi normally, tatanong ka ng, itatanong ng interviewer, uh, ano yung alam mo sa, sa company? ba? It should always, uh, you should always be able to have at least a good idea kung ano klaseng kumpanya sila, ano ba yung background nila, paano sila nag-start, uh, ilang sites na ba meron sila, ilang employer nila ngayon, um, ano yung, basically, yung product and services na ino-offer nila, di ba? Kasi ayaw mo naman pumasok sa isang kumpanya na pag tinanong ka ano yung alam mo sa kumpanya, sabi mo, hindi, hindi mo po alam. Kasi it will it will show a lot. Uh, it will um, it will show a lot kung ano yung motivation mo sa pag apply So, before you undergo a, a uh, or if you never your schedule already for an interview, make sure that before going to the interview, uh, research about the company. Know as much as you can. Know as much as you can uh, about that company. Also, 
think of the reason. Bakit yung company na yun, ba't kainteresado mag-apply sa company na yun? And you know why this is important? Because that would further motivate and encourage you to really do your best during the interview. So alam mo muna, bakit ba ako interesado sa company ito? Interesado ba ako? Kasi alam ko na malaki siyang kumpanya, na marami siyang nabibigay na benefit, na maganda yung uh, feedback ng mga employees ng kumpanyang ito sa akin, or uh, interesado ba ako sa kumpanyang ito? Kasi malapit ito sa bahay namin, uh, at um, madali ko lang siyang puntahan, balit siyang kumpanya, pero nagsistart pa lang siya, to pwede siya mag-grow. You, you need to be very sure of yourself. What is the reason why you're applying in that particular company, in that particular job? Bakit ba itong trabaho ito ina-applyan ko? Dahil alam na alam ko ba itong trabaho ito, alam ko kung papaano ako maging successful sa trabaho ito. Okay? Think of an explanation why you are job searching. Highlight your passion and motivation. And this is um, more of Two things. If you decided to immediately apply for work af immediately after graduating or even before graduating or applying for work, then it will be a good start for you to um, uh, highlight kung bakit ka-interesado. Ano ba yung passion mo? For example, you're applying for uh, a work where you would be able to be more creative. Or, or uh, if you're or looking for a job na magagamit mo yung sales and customer service skills mo, di ba? Um, ang, ang gusto ko lang ibahagi dito, bahagi dito is, uh, pag tinanong ka ng hiring manager mo kung bakit ka nag ng trabaho ngayon, kahit na fresh graduate ka ba, ba't ka agad nag ng trabaho, or halimbawa pinagpaliban mo, it took you a month, or a few months bago mag-apply, bago maghanap ng trabaho, you have to have a ready explanation. Right? Naghanap ako ng work ngayon kasi alam ko na um, after graduating college, I know that I am fully equipped with the skills and knowledge needed to be successful at the role. Uh, I am the breadwinner of my family. I'm highly motivated really to work in your organization. So, um, always go back to why you are applying and the reason why you are applying for the role. Okay? Also, bago kayo sumabak sa interview, reviewin nyo muna yung resume na pinasa nyo dun sa nag-interview sa inyo. Um, kasi minsan, di ba, minsan super excited tayong pumunta sa job interviews, nakalimutan na natin kung ano yung mga pinaglalagay natin dun sa resume. So make sure that um, uh, you are familiar or you fully understand. Ano yung mga hinighlight nyo sa resume nyo? Ano yung pinaglalagay nyo sa resume nyo? Kasi your resume will be the basis of the different questions that the interviewer will be asking you about. And it's it's always best to know kung saan, uh, kung saan yung mga questions magagaling. Right? Uh, prepare to talk about specific accomplishments. If you highlight your accomplishments uh, in schools, in your extracurricular curricular activities, if you highlight your experience in your on-the-job trainings, if you highlight um, uh, your success or being able to be a top graduate or an awardee uh, on your resume, make sure that you talk about it during your interview. Research about different questions and scenarios that the interviewer might ask. You know what? napakaswerte ng mga uh, tulad nyo nag-graduate pa lang. Kasi um, people already shared what are the different uh, or most common job interview questions na, na tinatanong ng mga companies. You just have to research of it and make sure na dahil alam mo na yung mga normal itatanong nila sa job interview, make sure you would be able to have the best answer and you'll be able to not only provide the best answer, but the most genuine answer uh, whenever you're faced with that question on your face-to-face -face interview or even in your virtual interviews, okay? And um, when you start the interview, uh, make sure to ask the interviewer's name and ask him or her 
how they would like to be addressed, di ba? Kasi sometimes they would just like to be addressed by their first name. Sometimes, kasi di ba, ang, ang mga Filipino, they always use sir or ma'am. Pero who knows, the person would just like to be addressed via his or her first name, right? Or they would like to be addressed uh, via their nickname. So ask, sir, how would, I, how would you like me to address you uh, before we start the interview? Should I address you with your first name? Or should I call you sir? Or should I call you ma'am? Or whatnot. Always act like you want the job. Ipakita niyo during the whole interview process na talagang desidido kayo, motivated kayo na makuha yung trabaho. Pero never, never act na desperado kayong makuha yung trabaho. Kasi too much motivation na bordering into desperation na ano na yan eh. Uh, it, would, it would create a red flag doon sa doon sa mag interview sa iyo. Bakit niya po gustong-gustong maging part ng na company na, namin. At also, it can be a reflect para, di ba, if you're negotiating for salaries, baka hindi rin maging favorable sa inyo. So, just to make sure you're motivated for the role, but never look very desperate. Okay? Also, um, don't ask for feedback on the spot. I understand that kaka-interview pa lang ng tao sa inyo, na interview sa inyo, at marami pa kayong i-undergo na process. Now, after the interview, after magtanong, after matapos ang interview process, um, let the person uh, provide you with the next steps. Just ask, sir, what, what will be the next steps after this interview? Wag yung tanong, sir, did I do good in my interview? Uh, what are my strengths and weaknesses during the interview? Don't ask that. Right? Don't ask what are your weaknesses or strengths during the interview kasi mas lalo mo siyang i-highlight doon. Mas lalo mo pag-iisip bas lalo mo pag-iisipin yun ng interview sa iyo. Ba't mo nga ba ito i-hire, di ba? It's, um, mas, ang, ang itanong mo is, what are the next steps? Right? And don't ask kagad kung, kung nakapasa ka o hindi. Understand that there are also many candidates being considered for the role. Right? So, um, just ask, not for feedback, but ask for what will be the next process or what is next to be expected after that interview. Kasi baka mamaya may mga exams ka pang kailangan i-take, baka may, may different people ka pa na, na mag interview sa sa'yo, right? And also, after undergoing all their uh, hiring process, make sure to send up a post-interview follow-up. And when you send a post-interview follow-up, you can either send an email to the person or to the company that uh, uh, you applied for thanking the person uh, for uh, taking time to interview you and also making a follow-up. Pero huwag kayo follow-up immediately that day. Ha? Give it about three days or one week, then you follow-up. Okay? So those are my top 10 interview tips, not resume tips, kasi yung resume tips, ano yun, kanina yun. Sorry, I wasn't able to, to change this. But those are my top 10 resume uh, interview tips for fresh graduates. Now, alamin natin ano ba yung onboarding essentials. And when we say onboarding, ito yung na-hire ka na. Nakapasa ka na. You're able to pass the whole recruitment application process at um, ano nang i-expect mo. Kasi as a fresh grad, I believe that you should know what are, are the things that uh, you should look forward to when you are being onboarded. When we say onboarded, Ito yung naiging part ka na ng kumpanya. Number one is, um, when you start, when you are uh, starting in the, in the company, you have to complete your pre-employment documentation requirements. What is your What are your pre-employment documentation requirements? That would be your, what? Your uh, uh, transcript of records, di ba? Kasi fresh graduates ka, they will ask, for task of records, your 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 uh, certificate of good moral character coming from your school, uh, or an endorsement from your school or from your guidance counselor. So depende yon kung ano yung pre-employment documentation requirements na hinihingi or hihingin sa inyo ng company. Next would be you need to undergo a pre-employment medical exam or yung tinatawag nating PEME. Yung pre-employment medical exam, it, ito yung uh, mag-undergo ka ng medical test para ma-make sure na pag na 
pag nag-start ka sa work, ikaw ay healthy, wala kang sakit, and you're able to do the work required for you. Of course, uh, once that uh, you've already completed your pre-employment documentation requirements, ang next mo naman ay yung company documentation requirements. Yung mga different forms ng kumpanya na kailangan mong pirmahan. Kasama na, po, kasama na dyan yung mga bank forms, at saka uh, normally yung company na yung mag apply sa inyo for SSS, field health, pag-ibig. So kasama yung mga forms na yan, kailangan yung kompletuhin. You need to make sure that you uh, complete them complete those requirements for you to be able to start your work. And also, schedule kayo ng orientation program or new hire onboarding session. It's very important that you attend the onboarding session. Some organizations would actually invest in one day or one week of onboarding. Some companies naman, hours lang yung onboarding session nila or new hire orientation program nila. It, different, it differs from one company to another. But it's important to attend the onboarding session kasi doon mo malalaman uh, sino-sino yung may-ari ng kumpanya, sino-sino yung offices ng kumpanya, ano nga ba talaga yung product and services ng kumpanya, and um, uh, what are the, who are the people in your departments, uh, what are the policies and procedures, or yung mga... Um, uh, dapat mong malaman patungkol sa kumpanyang pinasukan mo. Now, so, during your onboarding sessions, normally binibigyan ka pa ng sapat na time para uh, makomplete yung company paperwork. Again, kasama na nga dyan yung mga different requirements na magpapasa ka ng mga requirements sa hihingi sa inyo ng company. And then, um, you have to make sure that you have a copy, personal copy, ng job offer mo, copy mo ng employment contract, and also, kung nagbibigay ang company ng employee handbook at company policies, dapat may, may kopya ka rin uh, Although most companies right now, yung employee handbook nila and, and company policies nila ay digitized. Normally, nasa website lang nila or nasa internal folder nila. But you need to make sure na yung job offer mo at employment contract mo, may kopya ka niyan dapat personal. Okay, for your filing. And then, also, uh, during your onboarding, uh, onboarding with the new company, dapat alam mo kung sino ba yung mga uh, immediate managers mo or mga officers and department, or department team members. During your onboarding, you need to make sure you observe company culture and processes. Ano nga ba yung mga, anong klaseng culture meron ang kumpanya? Ano ba to? Uh, a very rigid ba sila? Very strict ba sila? Kailangan ba naka-uniform ka? Kailangan ba may certain way of doing things? So you need to make sure you understand and know this. Also, never or don't be afraid to ask questions or help. Kung meron kayo hindi naiintindihan or meron hindi malinaw during the entire onboarding process, make sure you ask your HR person or your ass or immediate manager so that you'll be able to have the right information or the right answers to your questions, okay? So those are your onboarding essentials. Now, let's go to Labor 101. Kasi sabi nga ni Ms. Bruno, kailangan daw uh, uh, ma-impart namin sa mga fresh graduates ano nga ba yung mga karapatan ninyo bilang isang uh, bagong manggagawa, di ba? Siyempre, di ba? Marami tayong naririnig, di ba? Marami tayong naririnig na, na pag nag-online ka, di ba? Uh, e -e Even at the Philippines HR Group, ma marami ka may kita opinion doon na, na mga karapatan mo daw uh, bilang isang manggagawa or marami ka maririnig sa iyong mga friends, pero ikaw, dapat, alam mo talaga kung ano dap dapat malaman mo kung ano ba talaga yung karapatan mo bilang isang manggagawa. And that's, this is the part of the discussion that um, I would like to share to you guys. This is really more of an understanding of labor. So there are two, uh, there are different types of employment in the Philippines. One is uh, term or fixed term employment. Meron tayong tinatawag na project-based employment. Meron tayong tinatawag na seasonal employment. At meron tayong tinatawag din casual employment. 
normal yung probationary and regular employment. Ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng mga to? Yung term or fixed term employment, ibig sabihin, merong period of of time na doon ka lang magtatrabaho o doon lang yung employment opportunity mo. For example, uh, there is a specific uh, uh, need for the company to hire uh, employees for a certain term. Uh, one month, three months, twelve months. So, po pwedeng bigyan nila sa yung contract ay fixed term employment. Po pwede naman na that companies would hire you because it's project based meaning ko terminus kasi yung fixed term sa project based pati yung seasonal employment ko terminus yung yung employment mo sa end ng project or sa end ng season pag project based employment kasi ibig sabihin may project si company kailangan nila ng 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 empleyado na magsa-start at pag natapos na yung project ibig sabihin tapos na rin yung employment mo sa kumpanya pag seasonal employment ito yung mga ano eh ito yung mga hina-hire ng mga ng mga companies kasi meron mga seasons or peak seasons sa tin- na, na tinatawag na kailangan nila lang mas maraming workers I'll give you a perfect example during the bear season October November December October uh, September October November December normally shopping malls or retail companies will hire more people Kasi ito yung mga panahon na mas marami silang customers, di ba? So, seasonal lang yung pagtaas ng production or ng services need nila. So, po pwedeng seasonal employment lang yung po pwede nilang ibigay sa inyo. Ibig sabihin, pag natapos na yung, yung, yung season na yun, hindi na kayo empleyado ng kumpanya. Casual employment are similar to fixed term employment or project based employment where yung trabaho niyo ay hindi naman uh, critical sa sa business when we say critical sa business hindi talaga yun yung services or products or hindi yun sinusuportahan yung services or products ng isang kumpanya na the pwedeng a casual employee kayo na na entry level na pwedeng merong end yung contract ninyo. Diba? Kaya nga tayo magtatawag na endo, di ba? End of contract. Pero yung mga probationary and regular employment, ito yung normal na minibigay ng mga companies. Na, and understand that probationary employment um, based on law, a regular permanent employment is where employees perform activities that are necessary and desirable. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na yung fixed term project based seasonal at casual ay hindi gumagawa ng necessary or desirable uh, business for the company it's just that sila yung mga critical na role sa company na pag nawala sila or nawala yung particular work na yon um yun yung mawawalan ng service or production yung company so pag pag critical or desirable yung work para sa isang kumpanya, normally nire-regular or probationary or, reg- or regular employment. At pag probationary, by law, 180 days. Okay? Ang interpretation ng maraming tao dyan, pag 180 days is 6 months. So anything beyond 180 days or anything beyond 6 months, automatic kayong regular pag wala kayong evaluation. Understand that companies would evaluate you either on a monthly basis during your probationary period. Diba? Sabi, six months. So, every month, po pwedeng meron kayong evaluation period. Or, po pwede rin na i-evaluate nila kayo on your third and fifth month. So, kailangan alam, alamin nyo. If you're a probationary employee, kung binibigyan kayo probationary employment contract, alamin nyo kung kailan yung third month at fifth month evaluation nyo or alamin nyo kung paano kayo i-evaluate. Okay? Under Article 281 of the Code, as I mentioned earlier, the maximum length of probationary period should be six months or 180 days. So anything beyond 180 days, kung, kung nakapasa kayo or pinasa kayo ng employer nyo 
for probationary period, then ibig sabihin magiging regular employee kayo. Pero hindi requirement ha na i-evaluate kayo ng ano ng company bago kayo maging regular employee. Kasi may mga companies na ano eh, uh, there are may there are companies na pwedeng nakalimutan lang nila na i-evaluate kayo basta pag more than 6 months na kayo as probationary employee, more than 180 days, technically regular employees na kayo. Okay? Also, um, alamin din natin, tayo po ba ay direct hire or agency hired? Kasi magkaiba po yan. Pag direct hire, ibig sabihin, ang employer-employee relationship nyo ay nando doon sa company nag-hire sa inyo. Pag agency hire, meron kasi tayong tinatawag na mga agencies or manpower agencies na i-hire kayo yung manpower agency pero matatrabaho kayo doon sa client nila. Now, understand na ang employer nyo ay hindi yung client. Ang employer nyo ay yung agency. So, si kay agency kayo magiging probationary or regular. Okay? Yes. Um, part of the labor one-on-one -on -one discussion is yung statutory saka company benefits. So, bilang isang employee, al alamin natin, ano ba yung statutory benefits? These are the mandated benefits. These are your SSS or Social Security System. SSS was created to provide private employees and their families protection against disability, sickness, old age, and death. Sa government, ang equivalent ng SSS ay ang GSIS. Now, Home Development Mutual Fund, ito yung tinatawag natin pag-ibig fund. It's a provident fund savings supplying housing loans to private and Philippine government employees and self-employed persons who elect to join the fund. So normally, pag empleyado ka, or, by, or even if may sarili kang business, you can actually be part of the Pag-ibig Fund or Home Development Fund. Philippine Health Insurance Corporation. Ito po yung PhilHealth. So PhilHealth is your, our Philippine Health Insurance wherein all employees are uh, eligible for this. This will be... Uh, uh, insurance that will pay for your medical leave. Hindi po lahat, ha? I mean, hindi lahat ng hospital bill. Iko-cover lang po ng PhilHealth a certain amount of your medical bill. And then, of course, yung mga leave benefits. Yung leave benefits po, by law, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na service incentive leave. Yung service incentive leave, ito po yung tinatawag na five days, ito po yung five days leave uh, na binibigay sa lahat ng empleyado after nilang mag- mag-work ng 12 months sa isang kumpanya. Pero, pag meron po ng existing leave ang isang company na more than five, kasi di ba karamihan sa mga companies ngayon, may tinatawag na vacation leave, may uh, uh, sick leave, basta more than five yung leave na ino-offer ng isang kumpanya, hindi na po requirement ang service incentive leave kasi na-fulfill na niya yung service incentive leave required ng company. Basta bear na silang uh, leave benefit na ino-offer yung company na more than five. Bear din tayo na solo parent leave, maternity leave, paternity leave, violent against women's and children's leave, saka yung uh, marami pang leaves na binibigay ang government. Under po yun ang statutory benefits. Kailangan alam nyo po yun kasi para alam nyo kung bakit kayo kinakatasan ng SSS, feel health, pag-ibig, at kung bakit ito lang, at ano ba yung mga leaves ninyo. Now, aside from statutory benefits, may tinatawag tayong company benefits. Ito yung mga benefits sa binibigay ng kumpanya. So, aside from the salary, of course, may mga allowance mong binibigay ng company. Yung allowance, pwedeng de minimis, or pwedeng mga allowance tulad ng transportation allowance, uh, food allowance. It depends on the company. Diba? Hindi naman po Wala lang pong sinasabi ang batas na ano na magbigay ng allowance ang company. Pero companies who can provide allowances, companies can provide bonuses or incentives. Companies also can provide leave benefits more than the service incentive leave. Diba? Sabi ko nga, ang requirement ng batas ay 5 days for every 12 months of service. Pero pag merong leave benefits sa si company, tulad ng sick leave or vacation leave na more than 5, Ibig sabihin, wala na po tayong SIL. 
of course, health coverage. Some companies go above and beyond. Hindi lang sila nakadepende sa uh, fair health. Uh, kumukuha din po sila ng HMO or mga healthcare providers or MaxiCare, IntelliCare, MediCard, and other HMO providers. This would be your health insurance. So, di ba normally, uh, ibig sabihin nito, pag nagkasakit po kayo, na hospital po kayo, yung bill nyo sa hospital, uh, go-cover ng field health, tapos yung remaining na hindi na-cover ng field health, po pwedeng ma-cover ng current health coverage ng company HMO ninyo. Meron din tayong tinatawag ng group life insurance coverage na wherein pag may nangyari po sa inyo, uh, may insurance na makukuha yung mga may iwan ninyo via the group life insurance of your uh, company. Now, there are other benefits also na, na company initiated. Ito po yung mga CBA benefits. Ito po yung mga uh, benefits na na nakukuha sa company na nagmula po sa ano sa bargaining agreement sa 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 pag may union po yung ang isang kumpanya normally the unions will have ano corporate bargaining agreements at may additional benefits po sila na na pinapatupad okay uh, i have taken note here that yung holiday pay overtime pay in night differential. Yung holiday pay po, overtime pay in night differential. Let's start po with the holiday pay. Lahat po naman gagawa na rank and file ay eligible po for holiday pay. Either special holiday pay, which is 30%, or uh, regular holiday pay, which is 100%. Yung overtime pay po, ibig sabihin overtime pay, if you work more than 8 hours in your work, and the night differential naman po is uh, by law 10% of your daily hourly rate. Pag nag-work po kayo between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So kung paggabi po kayo, paggabing chef, di ba? At nag-work kayo between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., may night differential po kayo. Note though that rank and files are the ones re uh, required by law to actually have that. Kasi pag supervisorial or managerial level na kayo, hindi na kayo, hindi na mandated ng law na magkaroon kayo ng overtime, night diff, and holiday pay. Now, it's up to the company to actually give you a holiday, overtime pay, night differential pay pag nasa managerial level na po kayo. Okay? Understand that. Uh, and then, next would be types of termination. Ako, ito po yung mga ayaw nating um, uh, maranasan. Pero bilang ito po ay Labor 101 sa inyong mga new graduates, um, alamin po natin ano po ba yung different types of termination. Sa Pilipinas po, meron tayong just causes and authorized causes of termination. Now, pinakakaraniwan dito yung just causes of termination. Ano po ba yung just causes of termination? When we say just cause of termination, these are acts attributed to the employee's own wrongful actions. Ibig sabihin, si employee ang may kasalanan. Ibig sabihin, si employee yung nag-violate ng rules and regulations ng company. So, pwede po itong violation against attendance, violation against performance, or violations against behavior. Ibig sabihin, um, vinidate nyo yung policy ng company with regards to attendance or hindi yun na meet yung requirement ng company in terms of performance or meron kayong behavior na against company's policies and processes. So, po, pwede po kayong ma-terminate via just causes. Meron din tayo tinatawag na authorized causes. Yung authorized causes po naman, ito po is yung uh, ina-allowed ng batas na mag-terminate uh, si employer para po sa cost savings mechanism. Yung just causes kasi, inaalaw ng batas na mag-terminate si employer dahil nga may cost yung pag-terminate sa inyo. Yung authorized causes naman is really a cost saving mechanism for the company allowed by law. 
So, employers can terminate an employee based on authorized causes like business and health reasons. Cases po yan sa Article 283 ng Labor Code. Ano po ba yung mga authorized causes? Pwede po pong insulation of labor-saving devices, redundancy, retrenchment, closing or cessation of business operations, and illness not curable within six months period. Okay? So, kung empleyado po kayo, uh, understand that there are two ways that you can be terminated, either for just cause or authorized causes. What you need to remember, though, is for both causes of termination, kailangan ma-follow ang due process. At ang due process is with regards to due process, kailangan sundin ang two-notice rule. So, meron po dapat kayo for just causes, meron dapat uh, notice to explain, and then notice of decision. For authorized causes, dapat may notice kay Dole at may notice kay employee at mag undergo po siya ng separation pay. Now, um, linawin ko lang po ha, kasi maraming mga new hires at maraming mga fresh graduates ang ano ang nalilito. Ano ba yung kakaiba ng full and final pay, separation pay, saka back pay? Now, ang full and final pay po, ito po yung nakukuha nating sweldo sa mga pag tayo po ay nag-resign or na-terminate sa isang kumpanya. Na na-terminate po tayo with just causes. Okay? Um, ito po yung mga tra uh, araw na pinagtrabahuan natin, uh, pro prorated 13th month pay, at kung meron po tayo mga tax refund. Yun po ang full and final pay. Kung baga, ito lang yung makukuha nyo after nyong ma-separate o ma-terminate sa company. Now, for for separation pay, ang may separation pay lang po ay pag ang termination ay because of authorized causes. Kasi ang authorized causes, tulad ng insulation of labor saving devices, redundancy, retrenchment, uh, closing of business at illness, binibigyan po siya ng separation pay. Hindi po binibigyan ng separation pay pag just cause of termination. Ang binibigay po ay full and final pay. Pag authorized causes, bukod po sa, sa full and final pay, meron pa pong separation pay na tinatawag. At may formula po na sinusunod uh, based on dole para sa uh, equivalent amount ng separation pay. Now, ano po ba yung back pay? Ang back pay po ay kung sakasakaling uh, magsampa po kayo ng kaso laban sa kumpanya, ibig sabihin meron kayong may pag-uutang ang kumpanya or may monetary obligation si company sa inyo na kailangan bayaran, yun po yung back pay. Okay? So magkakaiba po yan. Magkaiba po yung full and final pay, separation pay, saka back pay. Okay? Now, let's go to the last part of our discussion. And this is really more of tips on your career success. And you know what? Um, uh, before I go to this, I just like you to know that there are many pathways for a person to be successful. Um, and, and there are many self-help books, there are many tips, there are many uh, articles about that you can read on how you can really uh, chart your career to be successful in your life. Note though, the pag sinabing success, iba-iba po yung meaning ng success para sa tao. Yung iba, successful na sila pag na-reach na nila yung certain title or position. Yung iba, successful na sa kanila pag na-reach na nila yung certain salary. Di ba? So, understand that success is really based on your definition. But we all thrive to be successful. And what I can share to you are uh, success tips. So, since you are a fresh graduate, you need to take initiative at work. You need also to be your own evaluator. Diba? Evaluate mo. Tama ba yung trabaho ko? Maganda ba yung trabaho ko? Paano ko ba mapapaganda yung trabaho ko? Taking initiative, ano pa ba yung mga pwede, pwede kong gawin sa trabaho para mapaganda? Be ready to learn. Be, as a fresh graduate, understand that you're undergoing learning experiences. So make sure that you're ready to learn from your work. Okay? Hindi porket fresh grad ka, alam mo na lahat. Na, Napag-aralan mo na sa school yan. 
kasi doon mo palang masisimulan ng pag-aaral ang, ang, ang uh, real world, kumbaga, pag nanodun ka na sa corporate world. And anticipate needs. Um, mas, mas ba-appreciate the managers nyo at the company if you are a person that anticipate the needs of the organization. And normally, uh, not only the organization, but also anticipate your needs. Ha? Kaya, dapat, ano rin ito eh, uh, ang suggestion ko lang dito is, also make sure to have your own savings, uh, your, own, your own investment, because your financial stability will not be based on the company. Your financial stability will be your own responsibility. Then, um, you need to communicate well. As a fresh graduate, starting your work in the company, dapat matuto kayo to always communicate. Again, if you have questions, if you have concerns, understand and communicate. But communicate properly and respectfully. Okay? Set goals to achieve. Um, you should always have uh, a goal to achieve. Uh, and I would recommend that you, you have your goal book or what, what I would say is your journal, your success journal. Goal book or success journal, magbigay kayo ng timeline. Kailangan uh, in three months, in six months, in 12 months, ito yung matututulan ko, ito yung ma-achieve ko sa work. In 24 months, mapopromote ako, ito yung gusto kong sweldo para alam mo yung progression ko. Make sure that you need to set goals. Show, don't tell. When I, when I say show, don't tell, um, show to your employer what you can do and don't tell them what you need. I mean, show your employers what you are capable of doing to be a value, value to, to the company and just don't tell them na naku, kaya kong gawin yan. Ipakita mo sa kanila kung ano yung kaya mong gawin. Right? And then, it's important to all Hello, uh, hello, sir. In a while, I had a sister with it. Must be connection. Problem. Hi everyone, my name is Joseph Palma from Marikina Polytechnic College at nagtapos ako sa kursong Bachelor of Nazareth Technology, major in Garments, Fashion and Design. Nahilig ako sa fashion nung bata pa lang ako. Mahilig na kasi ako gumawa ng mga damit ng mga Barbie dahil ang mama ko ay mananahe. So, nagiging motivated ako gumawa ng mga damit dahil sa nakikita ko kay mama. So, yung hilig ko na yon ay nagtuloy-tuloy na siya. So, nag-aaral ako sa Marikina. Ako isang simpleng estudyante lang at mahilig akong sumali sa mga skill competition na yon. Um, natutuwa ako kasi lagi ako nasasama sa top 3 pero hindi ako yung nagiging first place. Okay lang kasi um, sabi ko sa sarili ko, sooner or later ako naman ang magiging top 1 sa larangang fashion na to. Minsan pa nga binibiro kami mga GFD na pag-graduate doon namin ay mananahin lang daw kami ng basahan. So ginawa kong motivation yon at iprove sa kanila na nagkakamali sila na kaya namin gumawa ng sariling pangalan sa prolangan ng fashion. Noong third year college ako, meron kaming OJP. So luckily, napunta ako sa isang sikat na designer which is si Ma Marine. And ang school ay natuwa rin sa akin kasi first time na magkaroon ng isang estudyante na mag-intern sa sikat na designer. Habang nag-OJP ako, mas lumawa pa yung kaalaman ko, hindi lang sa school at pati na rin sa work field na pinag-OJPhan ko. At mas marami ako natutunan, lalo na sa mga patterns at saka mga designing na itinuturo sa akin sa school at saka kay Mama Rene. Noong natapos ang OJP ko kay Mama Rene, 
um, luckily na observe ako sa shop niya bilang assistant designer niya. From that, lagi na akong sinasama ni Ma'am Marine sa mga big fashion shows niya. And ang nakakatawa doon, sinama niya ako sa pag assist ng Miss Universe 2016 dito sa Pilipinas. At ginanap yun sa Dabao. Ang at sinokish namin doon ay ang Mindanao fabric, which is the Tinala, Inaol, at mga Tibuli fabrics. At sabi ko pa nga sa sarili ko, one day, damit ko naman yung susuotin ng mga candidate ng Miss Universe. At nagsunod-sunod na nga ang pagsama ko kay Ma'am Marine, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, kundi international na rin. Last 2017, we conduct a fashion shows in Ottawa, Canada, New York, and Las Vegas in USA um, to promote the Philippine tourism using the indigenous materials that we have in the Philippines um, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. From world tours, sa hindi ko inaasahan, binigyan ako ng scholarship ni Ma Marine sa FIP which is the Fashion Institute of the Philippines and siya kasi ang president ng school na yun. kaya binigyan niya ako ng full scholarship sa school sobrang tuwa ako noon kasi isang pangarap na naman ang matutupad ko at um, one step closer to my dream na maging sikat na fashion designer kaya sobrang thankful at grateful ko kay Ma Marine dahil sinigyan yung opportunity sa akin at dahil doon hindi ko naman sinayang ang opportunity na yun at ginawa ko yung best ko para maging sikat na designer. Sa pagpasok ko sa FIP, hindi ako nahirapan dahil may background na ako in terms of pattern and designing dahil sa MPC, marami na akong natutunan doon. Kumbaga, ginawa ko na lang, in-enhance ko na lang ang natutunan ko sa MPC going to FIP. So, mas um, lumawak yung knowledge ko sa pag-aaral na yun at naging advanced ang paggawa ko ng mga patterns at mga design. Nag-graduate ako sa FIP noong 2019 at maraming opportunity ang dumating sa akin. Andiyan yun na feature yung mga garments ko sa Preview Magazine, Mega Magazine, Chalk Magazine at gumagawa na rin ako ng mga damit ng mga celebrities para sa kanila mga shows at mga guestings at gumagawa na rin ako ng mga damit ng mga beauty queens natin at na feature na rin yung damit ko sa Egypt na ginamit ni Miss Ecotourism which is si Kelly Day at sobrang saya ko nun kasi dati dream ko lang na magamit yung damit ko sa international pageant and now unti-unti ko na siyang nakakamit ang mga dreams na yun sa buhay. Despite of pandemic, um, nag-donate din ako ng mga PPEs sa ating mga... Okay, hello, uh, Sir Darwin? Hello. Yeah, hi. Okay. Hello, good evening. Um, dear, um, sorry, I was cut off. I'm sorry, I'm having some internet issues. May I know what what, what was the last, ano, what was the last uh, discussions na narinig niyo from my end? So, tips, sir. Tips about... Oh, oh. Ay, it was after the ano eh. It was after the sa employment. I forgot, ah, sir, kung alin eh. Ah, ah, after the balong day bar law na ano? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, that's sir. the tips of mm-hmm. career success na ako. Okay. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Tips on career success na ba? Yes po, sir. Okay, anong number na kaya? Around, uh, I heard the last one is yung parang vision board, set goals to achieve. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. So number six is set goals to achieve. Um, the, the, the reason why I normally tell, tell my team members or whoever um, I, would, I, would be talk, I would be talking to na either have a vision board, have a success journal, have a, a goal sheet is for you to be able to check your progress in your career, diba? What is your goal in the next 6, 12, 24 months, diba? 
um, and you will be able to ano to see and um and kung ano yung mga na achieve mo. So it's very important to set goals. Then show, don't tell. When I say show, don't tell, ipakita mo muna kung ano yung pwede mo magawa bago mo sabihin. Or instead of sabihin mo na sa company na, nako, ito yung mga dapat natin gawin, ito yung mga ano. Dapat, uh, you should show them first. Uh, be, the, be the trailblazer. Make sure that you really add value to the organization. And as a new hire or as a new graduate, and a new hire in the company, make sure that you always gain trust. Gain trust not only of your boss, but gain trust of the trust of your colleagues and co-employees. And understand that if people trust you, these people will help you achieve success. They will help you in achieving your goals in life. Also, create solutions. Um, pag nagtrabaho na po tayo, makaka kita tayo ng mga problema na maaring ma-face ng, ng, ng company o ng department. At pag nalaman po natin yung mga problema na yon imbis na sabi, pag, imbis na sabi natin kay, sa immediate manager natin o sa boss natin na, boss, ito yung problema niyan eh. Ganito yung mga problema niyan. Why not um, create solution first? Di ba? Have a solution mindset where uh, uh, create solutions to the existing issues or problems and that would really show that you are a valuable um, member of the company learn from mistakes this is one of my favorites um again lalo na na pag fresh graduate kayo at you're a new hire you will encounter mistakes in your work and it's okay to have mistakes believe me it's okay to have mistakes it's also, but what's good is that you learn from your mistakes and also learn from the mistakes of others, right? Because if you learn from your mistakes and you learn from the mistakes of others, that would make you a better person, a more equipped person. Be compassionate always. Always have a heart and focus on your goals. What is your goal? What is your goal diba, in your life? Now, I have... Um, I have one thing to show to all of you guys. Success is like an iceberg. And nakikita lang ng tao pag successful ka na. Diba? Yung nakikita nila yung mga awards mo, mga certifications mo, mga medals mo, mga recognitions mo. Ang hindi nakikita ng tao is yung mga, na, mga paghihirap, yung mga sacrifices na napagdaanan mo. Diba? Yung mga, yung mga things na nagawa mo. But understand that it's always good that to that for you to be able to be recognized, understand that you will need to undergo a lot of things. Because for your, for the people to see your successes, you should be able to undergo a lot of hardships. And one more thing is your career is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Wag po tayong masyado magmadali sa careers po natin. Um, there is no easy way to fast track your career. Your career should be a marathon. Dapat nagpapahinga po tayo, dapat nag-iisip po tayo ang yung mga next moves natin. Diba? The only uh, person you're competing, competing with is yourself. You're not competing with anyone. You're only competing with yourself. And never ever um, uh, uh, what you call this, never uh, compare yourself to the success of other people, right? Be, 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 have those people uh, inspire you with their successes, but never compare yourself to their success because you would have your own time. You would have your own journey and you would have uh, your own moment to shine and your own moment to be recognized. So basically, that's it for my presentation. I hope that um, marami, uh, kahit paano, ay may natutunan po kayo sa akin at sa ating pag discuss uh, coming from what are the different myths of uh, fresh graduates, what are the misconceptions of employers, what are the tips in creating a resume, what are the tips in uh, undergoing interviews, uh, we've discussed labor 101, what are the things that you need to know when you're onboarding, 
what are your rights as an employee and basically i provided you with tips about success at the end of the day it's really up to you always remember go back to your why why do you need to be successful if you understand that then you would be successful okay now please if you have any questions i'm i'm ready to answer them but please connect with me in social media please like my uh, social media pages uh, in facebook uh, hr guru life coach uh, or just type in facebook coach darwin rivers lalabas na po yung facebook page ko in linkedin kung may linkedin po kayo please follow me on linkedin just type darwin rivers lalabas po yung linkedin page ko please follow me and also in twitter if you want inspiration daily inspiration um uh sa twitter follow me darwin underscore coach in twitter okay so mara and also if you're not a member of the philippines hr group yet if you want to learn uh, learn more about what are uh, the things that your hr leaders or hr uh, department is handling diba ano ba yung mga mga ano namin mga normal issues na kinakaharap namin sa mga employers or employees natin uh, feel free to join uh, facebook group philippine phil hr groups or just type philippines hr group we we have more than 255,000 members already we're also on facebook and we're also in linkedin so again maraming maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon na kahit paano na makabahagi sa inyo ngayong araw na ito Thank you so much, Sir Darwin. Uh, I'm sure our graduating students learned a lot from your talk and, uh, you know, it's packed with useful information. And uh, not everybody gets a chance to be in sessions like this. And um, some students had to learn the hard way. Some students had to learn from experience with some trials and errors in between. Uh, I believe I was one of them uh, many, many moons ago. <laughs> we are grateful for the insights that could help our students as they navigate uh, the world of the employed. And uh, I know that some students probably have other questions concerning employment. To facilitate our open forum, here is Mr. Ronel M. Mirasol, OIC Head of Placement and Follow-up. Sir? Are you there? Sir Mirasol? Okay, kung wala pa si Sir Mirasol, or sige, let's begin the open forum. Does anyone have questions? You can unmute if you like, or I can read your questions. Ah, Sir Mirasol, are you there na? Ah, nandito na si Sir Mirasol. Sir Ronel? Okay, I'm not sure if... Uh, naririnig tayo ni Sir Ronel. We'll get in touch with him sa PM. Okay. Um, okay, sige. Let's carry on. If you have any questions, you either uh, unmute yourself, tapos you give your question, or you can also write or type in your questions and I'm going to read them for you. Who wants to begin? Ano naka-unmute daw si Sir? Okay, pero hindi ko siya nadidinig. Or maybe he's not uh, he's not here yet. Okay, po. Sino pang gusto mo mauna magtano regarding um, employment? You can raise your hand, or you can type in your questions. Anyone? Ah, oh, sige. Ako magtatadong ako. Sir Darwin? And yes, pa po kayo. Yeah, okay. Um, Natouch po ba natin yung, for example, red flags? Ako, I really want to 
uh, no, for example, the red flags na dapat abangan ng mga um, ano natin, graduating students. Parang mga no-no na to, for example, uh, sa interview, parang red flag na to on the part of the employer naman. Right? Like, uh, yung common. Uh, red flags. Mm -hmm. uh, or co red sa contracts, flags. yung mga ganun. Mm -hmm. okay. I think, I think, um, during the interview, I think red flags na 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 tinitignan ng mga employers or nag nag interview would be how how prepared the the candidate is, de ba? Mm -hmm. Kung di naman sila prepared, when they say pre uh, fully prepared, uh, were they able to dress up for the the, the interview, de ba? Hindi naman natin uh, we're not requiring them to actually dress up na fully formal or what not, but at least malinis at uh, um, naka, naka professional yung dating. Mm -hmm. And also, making sure that prepared sila dun sa mga isasagot, at, uh, isasagot nila sa mga tanong ng, ano, ng, kampa, ng interviewer. Red flags din siguro kung, ano, kung hindi nila um, Mommy, well, aside that? from the, the physical and red flags in terms of hindi nila masagot yung mga <laughs> questions during the question and answer, I think um, ang, okay. ang talagang okay. tututukan ng, ano, ng mga interviewers would be how motivated is the person is in terms of why are they applying for the role and for the job mm -hmm. and also um, are they qualified? Uh, do they have the right skill set to be successful for the role? Kasi kahit naman gusto ka namin i-hire o kahit na fully motivated ka, pero wala ka naman nung skill set na hinahanap ng company. At uh, yung skill set na yon ay hindi siya madaling ituro or kailangan na kagad from the beginning, then you won't be, you won't be hired for the role. Uh, for fresh graduates, understand that Ano, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na ang mga companies naghahanap lang yan na may experience. You have to use your experience in school. You have to, to use your experience during your on-the-job training. You have to highlight your your involvement in um, school activities, uh, school projects, your academic excellence, or even um, your involvement in different activities, uh, uh, social activities that would show yung character mo as a person, di ba? Ano ka ba? May leadership qualities ka ba? Ikaw ba ay good communicator? Ikaw ba ay good negotiator? Ikaw ba ay good presenter? Di ba? So, napapakita mo yun during uh, by lighting um, your experiences in school and not because you don't have any work experience. Okay. Okay. May naririnig tayong bata. <laughs> pwede po ba mag-unmute? Pero pwede kayong mag, uh, I mean, mag-mute. No? Uh, but you can unmute if you want to ask Sir Darwin anything. Um, okay, meron na po bang gusto magtanong? Raise lang ng hands. Thank you, Sir Darwin. Raise lang ng hand or uh, here. Okay, from Mary Ann Ola Air. Okay. Question, how to boost your self-confidence, for example, kasi daw, kadalasan sa mga kasama mo ay uh, hasa and skillful sa work. So as a fresh grad, so baka may parang, uh, you, you might feel inferior, so how do you like uh, boost your confidence? You know what, the, understand that the only person that could make you feel inferior is yourself. That's the golden rule. The only person who can make you feel inferior is yourself. So um, for you not to be inferior, again, just make sure you're prepared and ready. Diba? Uh, going back, hindi pocket may experience sila, they're skillful for the role or they're right for the role. It's really on how confident you are and how motivated you are to for the role for you to be able to land the job. Um, sabi nga ni, ano, ni Simon Sinek, one of my favorite um, uh, inspiration, uh, 
speakers or motivational speaker is you have to know your why. You have to know uh, why you are doing this. Because if you know your why, then you'll be able to understand your how. Okay, thank you. Sir. Um, would you say, sir, na ano, um, malaking step din yung, for example, uh, joining personality development or very short courses on personality development? Or have you have you heard of, uh, say, mga fresh grads na kinuha yon or usually nangyayari na to sa work mismo? Um, well, nangyayari yan, di ba? Yung mga personality development or yung mga programs about improving your personality. Normally, it, it's being given in school also, eh, prior to you graduating uh, in college. But if you have not have undergone that, then there's no harm if you took up additional trainings or programs to boost your confidence or to boost your skill set. Again, um, learning, understand that learning should never stop because you graduated from college. Learning should always be part of your life. So if you feel that you will be more confident if you take up additional courses, additional trainings that will boost your confidence, that would add more to your skill set, that would add more to your knowledge, then do it. There's no harm in doing doing it. It will be something that you can put in your resume also. But at the end of the day nga, ano eh, kahit hindi mo gawin yun, alamin mo lang yung why mo and how. You'll understand na, ano, na, na how you'll be successful. Kasi note that hindi lahat ng fresh graduates merong capability na mag-invest into different uh, seminars and workshops. But there are a lot of free seminars and workshops right now that you, that you can avail. There's a lot of uh, training modules online that people, especially fresh graduates, can, can take. Even the top-tier universities, yung mga Ivy League schools like Harvard, uh, are giving away free online courses. Diba? And um, for Sarah, also are is doing that a lot, a lot of the courses that are providing those so if you are able to um, if you're able to uh enroll yourself with either a paid learning session or a free learning session uh, on on those different universities or those different organizations then it's a plus for you Hi. Thank you, sir. Um, other questions? May questions pa po ba tayo from the participants? Habang nandito si Sir Darwin, mas magandang maitanong na natin sa kanya no? while, you know, better do it live. Kasi talagang lahat ng pwede nating maitanong, masasagot niya Okay, so wala pa. Hold on. Okay, lang, sir. Okay. If you don't have, if, if you're shy to ask or whatnot, again, just join the Philippines HR group, then we'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll try our best to uh, answer if you have any questions posted mm -hmm. uh, in the FB group. Um, siguro ang, ang masasabi ko lang sa mga, ano, sa mga fresh graduates, no? Um, you're in a very different situation because unlike us before, uh, the, the environment and the setting at work is very different right now because of the pandemic and the global mm -hmm. crisis. Understand that um, mas double time, mas mahirap talaga. And that's, that's a reality na, ano, na magkala, magkaroon ng trabaho ngayon. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na hindi kayo magkatrabaho or hindi ibig sabihin na hindi kayo magkasumikap. Also, understand also na hindi lahat ay pwedeng maging employee. Kasi baka mamaya uh, uh, you, you are really destined to become an employer, an entrepreneur. Diba kanina nga, uh, you, uh, a good friend of mine was your speaker, Maho Custodio. Uh, uh, he was uh, sharing to you guys how he was successful in using indigenous materials to create uh, fashionable shoes, di ba? Uh, alamin mo muna, ano ba yung passion mo? Kasi baka mama, your passion and your purpose in life. 
Kasi, um, check if you really would like to work uh, to become an employee or would you rather be an entrepreneur and go to becoming a businessman. Pero kasi, understand na fresh graduate ka, mahirap mag-start ng business ka agad. Diba? Unless meron kang family business, meron ka ng template, uh, at may magtuturo sa'yo. Hindi lahat naging successful sa pagbe-business. Pero, mas maging successful ka kung naging employee ka tapos nag-business ka. Okay. So, may question dito uh, from Andre. What is the good response if the interviewer asks them about strengths and weaknesses? Then, uh, your strength would be your core... Ikaw lang makakasagot ngayon eh, di ba? You just have to be honest, transparent and honest when when the person asks for your strength and weaknesses. But uh, ako, um, highlight your strength, but when it comes to weakness, make sure that that weakness can also be transformed into a strength. Mm. For example, um, my weakness is I oftentimes is impatient. And I oftentimes tend to be obsessive compulsive, but mm-hmm. me being impatient or me being obsessive compulsive would mean that I would ensure that uh, work is done uh, to what is expected and work is mm-hmm. done uh, effectively and efficiently. Diba? Try to tweak your yeah. your your weakness. Na mahikita parin ito as a strength. Don't try. Don't say na na ko ito yung weakness ko at wala kang rebuttal about it. Parang, ano, that's like shooting yourself in the foot. Okay. The foot, yeah. uh, Jeanette's asking, kasi mahina daw yung connection niya, what exactly should I put on my resume and what should I leave out? I think I was able to discuss that earlier, yun mm-hmm. sa tips on creating your resume. Uh, just be concise and honest mm-hmm. about your, your, everything that you need to put in your resume. Uh, highlight the things that you feel would uh, tailor fit the need of your employer or your future employer. Diba? Uh, tailor fit your resume to the requirement of the job. Base it on the job description and then tailor fit your resume for that. Then highlight whatever experiences, characteristics, and uh, skill set that you have. Okay, ito na. Ang dami ng questions natin. From Alfie Dilag, what is the best question to ask if they ask you, do you have any questions? Um, I think when the per- when the interviewer asks if you have any questions, just be prepared to ask one or two questions and those questions will be more of uh, about the work itself or about the company itself so that it will give an impression that you're really eager to be part of that organization, that you're really eager to be part of the company. Sir, I, I'd like to, I, I just, I know, I remember this tweet uh, a few weeks back of um, how uh, a certain graduate rejected a, a job offer of like uh, 34000 37000 Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know you've heard of that. So, for example, if the if if uh, an employer offers some you know, some an amount kanyan, parang okay, yeah, what is your starting point or How will you negotiate? Um, for you to be able to negotiate on your salary, understand mm-hmm. that you need to make sure that you know muna what is the entry level salary or the minimum salary for the role. Alam mo na ano yung minimum salary ng NCR. Di ba? Pag alam mo yung minimum salary ng NCR, alam mo yung minimum salary or yung industry salary na binibigay. You have to do your research eh. You have to uh, check what is the minimum salary that the industry or for that particular role is being given. You can check on that on Payscale, on Job Street or um, in Glassdoor, kung ano, yung, ano, kung ano yung mga minimum salary nila. Then from that, kung may kita mo yung salary ranges, then that's where you can do a negotiation. Now, mm-hmm. kasi ano lang naman yun, kung 
bababa sa minimum requirements or bababa sa pingin mo yung ano yung salary na gusto mo then that's where you negotiate but my my issue kasi with that uh, particular particular um the the one that 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 trended the last time about uh not accepting a 3070 salary even if it's an entry level understand is that person highlighted not his skill but highlighted the investments that his parents uh, gave to him studying on a particular university and that's not how you negotiate your mm. uh, your your salary because end of the day it's not really your school it's your skill set that would right. that would uh, matter the most um, it's okay to negotiate but do not do not over negotiate where uh, it's unrealistic diba? and you would know naman that again for you to know that you have to know the salary range for the role uh, you have to research on it um the next question is um, is it a good impression that you have a backer when applying for a job there's no need to have a backer in applying for a role as i mentioned earlier uh dun sa top myth na mga graduates if you were able to catch that hindi po uh, hindi ko lahat ng ina-applyan kung kumpanya ay may kilala ako or hindi dahil may backer ka ma uh, ano ka magiging successful ka pero kasi tayong tinatawag na ano employee referral program sa mga companies na yung employee referral program ano yon uh, program yon para sa mga employees nila na mag-refer na makakilala nila pero hindi ibig sabihin backer mo sila ibig lang sabihin na um, they referred you but you will still undergo the normal process of hiring Kasi hindi naman sila yung, hindi naman yung backer mo yung haharap sa interview. Hindi naman yung backer mo yung haharap sa exams. Ikaw pa din yun. Diba? And mm-hmm. if ever you were, would you be proud to actually land a job because someone back you back you without even proving yourself? Diba? Okay. I think one last question, sir. No? Yes, please. Uh, regarding the salary. <laughs> Regarding the salary, no. Um, how? What's the best way to answer daw if the employer asks din yung ano yung how much salary are you seeking? Then, just be prepared. Kasi kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, um, under research on what is the salary range for the role in that mm-hmm. industry. Mm-hmm. Kaya nga you need to research through Job Street through pay scale, through glass door, you also need to ask around ano ba yung salary uh, going on salary range kasi um, normally companies will just base it on the minimum requirements of the law eh am kada lang ba yung minimum natin ngayon di ba ko entry level ka minimum wages would be their base okay thank you sir and i guess um you could also um Siguro yung mga questions siguro or yung mga how how to say it how to uh, the exact things in the in an interview you can also research on that no uh so Google or online if you need more uh, if you need to ask more questions you can contact Sir Darwin do sa mga binigay niyang links kanina sa social media okay because um uh, Sir Darwin needs to go to work tama ba ko, Sir yes yeah? okay. we have work okay. right now um All right. uh yeah if you have uh, additional questions or please follow me and my social media pages in mm-hmm. facebook just uh search for coach darwin rivers in linkedin uh follow me using my name darwin rivers and twitter uh darwin underscore coach if i'm not mistaken okay. so yun. and uh for the copy of representation i've already sent it to miss bruno and maybe she'll she'll be able to share the, the presentation that I I uh, shared to you guys. It Thank was full act, but um, normally nga, sabi ko nga, it's a whole day seminar, pero um, we only have a, a few hours. I was only expecting to have an hour, pero naka two hours na ata tayo. So I think um, we still, there's still a lot of things that needs to be learned, but um, I'm happy to at least share to you 
uh, some inputs that I have. And hopefully, it will help uh, you guys be equipped as you go through the process of joining the corporate world. Thank you, Sir uh, Darwin, for the additional inputs. And uh, as a token of our appreciation for your generosity in sharing your insights and experiences, the Marigina Polytechnic College awards this certificate of recognition to Mr. Darwin Rivers for his important contribution and dedication as resource speaker in the pre-employment webinar for graduating students facing the challenges of online job application of, te of technology graduates during the first um, National Higher Education Day and Shed 27th founding anniversary, Pajak MPC, Pajak Moving Forward, Claiming Victory for Philippine Higher Education, Pamantasan Pandayan Tungo sa Kaunlaran, held on May 17, 2021. Given this 17th day of May in the year of our Lord 2021 at Marikina Polytechnic College, Marikina City, signed Attorney Lily Freda Emila. Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you, thank yeah. you for Thank you everyone for having me here. It's it's I know it's um it's always an honor to uh, bring back to my alma mater. Thank you, sir. We will send you, sir, the actual certificate and the token. Thank you. Okay. I'll All right. Uh, yeah, sure, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Paul. Sir Darwin. Do you have any announce? you have any announcements, Poser? Okay, I don't know what I have to Sir Darwin. Okay, so again, if you need to ask questions for Sir Darwin, just contact him on his um, social media links and pages. Now, um, announcement. Um, you the link to the evaluation form is posted uh, in the chat box kindly accomplish the evaluation form so you can receive your e-certificates okay now we've now come to the end of our webinar to formally close the program i'd like to call in mrs Anne marie h Baltazar, oic director office of student affairs okay thank you very much sir darwin for always being available to mpc talagang napakalakas sa sa iyo ni Ma'am Bruno kasi talagang hindi mo siya napapahintulutan as always uh, we appreciate uh, your sharing your expertise and uh, experiences and giving us the latest updates in this virtual world especially now that uh, in a matter of 6 or 8 months our the OT, the ITN, VTT student will soon be graduating. At least they are now equipped with the latest trends that uh, you have discussed earlier. We have given them one side of, of the coin. The other side is just for them to show what they can do, show their strengths, and believing in themselves that they are capable of uh, being hired as a new uh, graduate in this uh, new normal times. Napakaswerte ng mga estudyante natin ngayon dahil sabi nga ni Ma'am Priselda, they have webinars like this wherein they are given tips, uh, they are being uh, knowledgeable of what are the do's and the don'ts prior to the most crucial uh, uh, thing that they would be facing during their have job hunting days. Again, um, we hope that uh, we will be having Sir Darwin again in for his future talks, and we will also be having other webinars available for our technology students. Maraming maraming salamat.
Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ma'am Baltazar. Now, while the first day of our celebration has ended, we highly encourage you to partake in our other webinars, such as Productive Lockdown with Project Gulayan on May 19 at 8 a.m. The speaker is Mr. Romer Martanyamora, and the moderator is Assistant Professor Anna Cristina Budai. We hope to see you again in the next webinars. Thank you. Be safe and enjoy the rest of the day. And don't forget to uh, accomplish the uh, the form, the evaluation form. Thank you. Thank you and hope to see you again in the next webinars. You can also scan this. You can also scan the evaluation form.